was Hitler, he was in Europe. I said I was Hitler, Hitler was in Europe. And this Hitler was practicing apartheid. Yes, Hitler was practicing apartheid. And this European scientists wanted it to turn. And this European scientists wanted it to quench. One more time. That was Hitler. He was in Europe. That was Hitler. I say he was in Europe. And that Hitler was practicing apartheid. Yes, Hitler was practicing apartheid. And the European soldiers wanted him to die. Oh yes, the Europeans and Jews condemned him to death. That was war! I said that was war! Yes, that was war between Hitler and Europe. And that was war to eradicate the battle in Europe. And that was war to eradicate the battle in Europe. And all the whole world was invited to fight. The whole world was invited to fight. Yes, the whole world was invited to fight because America was invited to fight. Japan was invited to fight. Russia was invited to fight. France was invited to fight. Not all that. Africa was invited to fight. Yes, Africa was invited to fight. My father and your father were invited to fight. My father and your father were invited to fight. Like obedient children, we went there to fight. Like obedient children, we went there to die. I said, like obedient children, we went there to fight. Oh yes, like obedient children, we went there to quench. Now help them finish. Now they don't want to help us. There are so many Hitlers in Africa today. I said there are so many Hitlers in Africa today. Good evening, good evening, good evening, folks. Samson told Labron Public Radio, I want to welcome all of you again. We're back as usual. Thank you, thank you very much. This wonderful, wonderful Friday afternoon. We're going to have fun. Uh, we're going to be discussing the progressive here tonight, but we will be skewing most of our discussion about our hero, the late Dr. Emma Sawyer. And I'm going to go a little bit deeper into that here tonight. But first things first, safety, safety, Lord Jesus we want to thank you for bringing us back here again. Lord, we ask you to continue to provide a protection for all of us. Lord, give us wisdom. Lord, we ask you to bless all of us. Continue to protect us. In the eve of all of this uh, disease here, disease there, Lord, we ask you. We have nobody else to turn to but you. And so we ask you as our father, as our brother, mother, the protector of all mankind, we ask you to continue to protect us. Lord, we ask you to bless the country of Liberia. Bless the leadership of Liberia. Give them wisdom to do what is good for our people. Lord, we ask you to bless, bless the host country as well, the United States of America. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Folks, let's get it going. Let's get it going. Sam Sinto, LeBron Pablo I'm going to be talking about the progressive here tonight. But before I start all my process here, let's go back a little bit. Let's take a, 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 a walk into the membrane lane. Because, I, and folks, I keep telling you this. Uh, the liberal progressive is not Johnny come lately when it comes to these things. Of course, I was young. Very, very young, but I participated in, 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 in all of the stuff almost. Anytime the media is called, I'm there. Of course, when these people are ready to waste the English, when they're ready to waste the book, nothing I understand. God, I, don't, I don't even know book. I still don't know book. But when they're ready to talk, just by their, their, their way of expressing themselves, it gives you energy. You say, What can I do? And we consider ourselves a full soldier of the progressive folks. Uh, it's going to be interesting. I didn't. I never had the opportunity to go to LDU. That's for sure. That's for sure. But I have somebody, somebody who also was big shot in Liberia. She was the deputy minister for research and development in Ministry of Education. She was my mom, and she really, really pushed me 
push me to be to, to participate to be to be able to see a lot of stuff in the city now let's remember now her name Bertha Baker example Dr. Bertha Baker example and I keep I keep emphasis uh, put emphasis on the word Baker I don't want to go into any more than that but she continued to tell me at the time she was going to keep she would say Samson because I like to have one grown up. The grown up in like, bro, me and Maria were just too much in me. Hey, hey, I sleep in the street. Well, so why, if I say so? But she would say, come to work. And then when I go to work in the morning, I said, okay, dad, she spent 15, 20 minutes of her time in the morning to lecture me. Ah, that woman, bless her soul. She's my mom. But anyway, she got me involved. So I am quite familiar with most of these things that I'm going to be talking about here today. I'm not speaking. Most of them were not going to be coming from second hand. Okay? So let's get it. But before we start that, let's have this Friday evening. Those of you that have to be anywhere tonight, please help yourself. We understand that if you have to go, that's okay. But if you want to stay with us and enjoy ourselves, we're not here for, uh, for any kinds of confrontation or what have you. I expect you to disagree with me, but let's respect each other view. Let's respect how we interact here this afternoon. Samson told LeBron Paparito, I am here again tonight. I'm going to be showing you some of the stuff here again tonight. But before I start all that process, uh, let's go, let's take a, a, a walk into the membrane lane of the progressive. Those that, that are me, the educated progressive. Me, I'm not educated, I'm just a, 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 a liberal progressive. And I say educated, but the educated pro progressive in Liberia, those days. Let's look. Folks, it's very interesting. Sam St. Thor, LeBron Pomeridio. Let's go ahead. And let me put this on. Chinese are ruling China land. Japanese are ruling China land. Chinese are ruling China land. Japanese are ruling China land. Chinese 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 are ruling China land.
Japanese are ruling in that Japan. Japanese are ruling in that Japan. England is being governed by Englishmen. England is being governed by Englishmen. Americans are ruling America. Oh. Yes, Americans are ruling America. So, Africa must be ruled by Africa. Okay, so let's start. Let's start. You saw that but most of the people in there, Dr. Sayer, Dr. Tipote, Dr. Famler, Dr. Bole, and the rest, the rest of the progressive. Now, there's been a saying, I mean, we've been around, we've been reading, but there are people who got angry of their inept behavior, the people who get angry of the fact that they are unable to govern, people who get angry of the fact that they, perhaps they are not even able to understand what it means by governing. And because of their inept behavior, what do they do? They gravitate towards the, the, the progressive, and then the progressive spoil the country. The progress, they educate the people, they, they destroyed our country. Are you sure? Are you sure the educated progressives spoil your country? Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? You need to go and do more research. Because when I was growing up in Monterey, like I said, I grown up man, EJ Raw was my, was, my, was my bedroom, I would say. Because there's no party that goes on in EJ Raw that something to and not be in there. There is no more guy band playing in EJ Rod that I will not be. Uh, please, in Monrovia, I beg you. The only thing I will not do is to steal. But club, I go to club. Uh, beer, I drink the beer. I drink the like a water. That was years and years ago. I run, I run away from those kinds of stuff now. Yeah, why not? I got children. What do I want again? Uh, yeah, yeah, and I in the market. Uh, yeah, I got married. Where I want? Uh, and I don't, I don't, I don't in the market. I'm going to come go drinking for what? Hey, those, days, those days are over. But however, the progressive ideas. And I want to give it to you here straight tonight. I'll be reading Dr. Fumler tribute to uh, Dr. Sawyer. The late Dr. Sawyer passed away. Like I've, 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 look, folks, for some reason, and I'm not boasting, God has always, always guided me to be at places at a time. When the death knew of Dr. Sawyer hit Monrovia, the few people who, and I'm not going to call a name here tonight, the few people who were privileged to know that. I'll give you an example. So one night, a political friend of mine decided to invite another friend of mine and myself and a few other friends, uh, big guys, at his house. Because the political person was going to be speaking to us. And we were there. And we were there. We had some conversation. While we were there, the political figure came in to have a conversation with us. In Monrovia, true story. So he decided, okay, fight, folks, before I introduce uh, the, the, the guy who invited us, uh, because this guy, I know of him, but he never met me before. He know of the liberal progressive, but we you know. So I went in there and, uh, you know, he came out, introduced ourselves, and then he decided the, the, the one female, the one female that was among us, her husband was very close. In fact, he used to be one of the progressive, but he died. So, but she's always participating in the progressive ideas and uh, progressive conversation. So he said, let me talk to this lady. And they went in to go have their conversation. In about five minutes, before we even start the conversation about his political, whatever it is, he came back in. 
said, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What's going on, sir? Said, somebody just called me from the state. Dr. Sawyer just died. And we just, I mean, the, the sale of our ideas that I was bringing on the table, what I think this man need to know and how he think he's supposed to be, whatever, what the sale went flat on us that night. So I would say, besides the family, perhaps I was one of the few Liberians to get that news that night. And uh, he said, well, thank you guys for coming. But at this stage, as you guys know, my uh, close connection with Dr. Sawyer, I am unable right now to even talk to you or say anything. I said, okay. We said, okay. And he left. Why did I bring that up? Because I'm always at these positions. God has not, has not forgotten or never, never will forget me anyhow. Let me go back. People are always saying, they'll come out and say, oh, the progressives spoil the country. How can an educated person spoil the country? The person took all these years to educate himself, PhD, and he said he spoiled your country? Then you're not talking right. But these are kinds of conversation that will come out of the mouth of those who are in charge, who are supposed to help to move the country forward. But because of their own failure, their inability to, come, to carry out the process of governing and governing well. So the progressive have also been, uh, they are throw by. Uh, they throw the progressive on the, on the bus and perhaps the Liberian people will like it. Because those who brought war to Liberia, yeah, some of them were progressive. But as you will hear from our hero tonight, the late Dr. Sawyer, as you will hear from him tonight, what, the video that I'm going to play is, um, you can go on anywhere, you'll be able to find it. But as you will hear from the viewer tonight, he will tell us. And I want you to pay attention to this because you cannot come from this show tonight and tell me that the progressive ruined your country. If the country was to be, even if the country went bad, I think it's all of us. It's not just the progressive. How can you say the progressive? And these are brothers and sisters that give you one man, one vote. You're not in a yoke and the hands, a grip of two we party anymore in your life. My goodness, Liberian, can you not be grateful to these people? Please. I know most of these people. Most of them here in why they were here in the United States, they were going to school, they have family, they have jobs. But every other weekend or every weekend, they go from state to state to organize themselves so that they will fight for you from here. And it continues. The process continues. The, the young people come over here, they educate themselves, but they still are still letting their voice to our brothers and sisters. And you're going to tell me the progressive are ruining your country? Do you know the story of D D Twer, who went against Tuckman? And what was Tuckman saying? I went through it, folks. That's why when I'm ready, I go through these things here live. But people don't pay attention. D Twer went against Tuckman. And what did Tuckman do? Knowing fully what that D Twer was popular. First of all, he was very popular in his own country, in his own county. So the Tuckman then, knowing that D12 was good, so he went to the crew people and said that D12, and I'm just paraphrasing, and D12 was terrorizing crew. You are not a real crew. Seaside crew, you are not a real crew. And most of the educated crew who were with Tuckman, they decided to carry on that message of separating to a, a with from the from the crew people. <laughs> I'm not going to go into that tonight because this is not about that. How can you say the progressive has ruined your country when it is the same progressive after their education here in the diaspora decided to go back 
and educate you, many of you, many of you that goes around trying to spoil the progressive need. Many of you got your better, your best education from honor needy's progressive. They taught you at the University of Liberia. Many of them. Many of them. Many of you today who are this minister and that minister and this because of your inept behavior, because of your failure to make sure that your people survive. You're not standing around how the progressive ruin the Liberian economy, how the progressive ruin, how, they, how can you say that with a straight face? And I will let Dr. Sawyer speak for himself tonight, folks. <laughs> the liberal progressive among the folks. And I'm very serious. I'm very serious. So let's go back. I'll show you the memory lane here a little bit. So let's go back to my own involvement. So back, I'm not even going to start from uh, the uh, beginning of uh, 70, I mean, the, the middle of 78, when I started getting, uh, you know, but let me just tell you a little bit what happened. So my mom, uh, Dr. Berta Baker Azango, Deputy Minister of, uh, Minister of Education, very good friend to uh, Madam Henrich, Dory Banks Henry. If you've know, been reading, you know who I'm talking about. They're very good friend. Very good friend to Jackson F. Doe. They used to be a very good friend. Very good friend to Duncan, Oliver Duncan, former minister, deputy minister as well, minister of education. Very good friend to Blamo, minister proper, minister of education. Very good friend to your former president, Madam Sally, Dr. Boyta Baker, example. So I used to stay with her. In Pennsylvania, I lived in a the house there for almost four years or what have you. That's, she's my mom. But I didn't like the way I was being pushed around by the by the father, uh, Mr. Ezanko. We call him, we call him Gugu, Gagu. Gagu was somebody who is from Lofa. He's from Lofa, but he was educated by them. And so he behaved like them. And so when a woman comes to the United States, she, when she's coming back, she will bring clothes for the son, the proper real son. I'm not going to call his name. The real son, who and I about the same age, she will bring clothes for both of us, just like twins. And he didn't like that. Why would a country man, son, be wearing the same kind of clothes with, with, with his civilized son? But the woman was not onto that because, first of all, she's Christian. So what did she say? She said, okay, Samson, you want to go? I said, yeah. She said, okay. She went in, in her room that afternoon. I still remember, just like yesterday. Brought, brought money. Said, the money can take you from here to Grand Jira. Please go to Tota. I said, yeah, ma, I'll go to Tota. <laughs> that was the beginning of my grown-up business in Monrovia. She gave me the money, enough money. And I would have taken me straight to Tota, and I was still going to have enough to blow her up. But I said, I refuse. I came, and I got some relative friends. I said, I don't want to go to Tota. Let me stay in the Monroe and struggle. So I stay in Monroe, but thing was hard. But I refused to give up. Sometimes the whole day we would not eat. So one other stuff, there's this lady that passed here maybe 10, 15 years or even more ago, uh, called Julia Klam. She died alone with, with Dr. Uh, Moluba. The accident that killed Dr. Moluba, the former vice president. Uh, they, and she died with her with, with him. Okay. Uh, she she's a crown woman. She used to have stuff for people to sell. She had uh, uh bread, she used to have bread, cornbread, she used to have uh people who know her. You know the story I'm talking about. So she used to help people you sell for her. She pay you, but you get to eat and stuff like that. So one night, another friend of mine and I, we were walking on Broad Street. <laughs> we started speaking every crown. At that time, in total, then. The same time we were talking that night, the rice in, in Grand Jira County was red. And we started talking about different, different type of rice. Are you pour, are you pour palm butter over the rice? Are you pour, you, you pour uh, uh, flour salt over the rice? We started talking. Things that will make you hungry. We started talking. We were just lecturing. My friend and myself, speaking every crown. She was walking behind us. And then she got so discouraged and so tired of us complaining about and being hungry. She just said to us in crown, children, why you can't go home? The guy myself will scatter because somebody not know our secret. 
Eventually, she found us the next day, and she asked to see if I wanted to sell for her. But I said, no, I didn't want to do that. So anyhow, short story. My progressive life I'm giving you this afternoon. Please, stay with me. So eventually, there's a store on Benson Street. Those days, Benson and Gary Street, underneath Women's Tubber uh, Field, Father's House. So they've stored there two stores. One is uh, for the lackeys, and the other one was for it's a Spanish store. He sells liquors, he sells uh, sardine, all kinds of food. Wear chessing, then you should go and buy their meat, you know, the pig, pig feed, you know, all kinds of stuff. But anyhow, I first went to this, this Lebanese man who was selling these liquor in Spanish store. I started working for him. He was paying me. I believe it was thirty-five dollars a month. That was a lot of money. Money I was paying what for rent at that time. No, at that time I, I was still living with my my, my other friend. I was not even renting, but he was paying ten dollars a month. So I was making thirty-five. Could help him with two dollars and fifty cents. Hey, yeah, 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 that's a lot of money to go out. So when the grown-up business started getting to me, the next door store, the one closer to Getty Street on Benson Street South. Benson Street now, because Benson Street run, uh, uh, I call it East West, if you remember. So south of Benson Street on Getty Street, Getty Street now run north, uh, 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 south north or north south. So the corner of that, okay. So anyway, this guy, Lucky's, young man about the same age as as moi. So I decided I want to talk to him. I said I want to work for him. So, okay, so I said I would do a good job, but I want certain certain things to be happening. So what is it? I said, how much are you gonna pay me? He said, well, I'll give you thirty six dollars. I said, I'll take it. But I, every month I want half of that in your old shoes because he used to like dressing. I said, your shoes. Every month, half of that, give me your shoes and give me the other one in cash. And uh, other month, give me. Uh, 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 old clothes that you have. This, I mean, we used to wear the same size, but he used to dress. He used to really, really get down. Bare balance. Um, uh, please. Polyester bare balance. The one where you walk in, in the street, it collects water. That's how you know that you are a man in Madrovia. You walk in the street, people don't see you. So, he started giving sh shoes. Platform shoes, the heels, the true story. Platform shoes, the heels about this. So we used to go and put iron in the front of it and in the back so that when you're walking on the sidewalk, so they can hit the, the sand and you can hear crap, crap. Then they know something to coming. Man, the grown up business in Moria part, that one part, don't worry about it. Anyway, one day, the something to man who Dr. Victor Baker have sent to Toe Town years ago. He's in Maria still. So one day, the woman and my twins brother now came to the store to buy. And you know, in these stores, then when you sit down inside, they, they have a mirror, I mean, like a, like a glass, but you can see the reflection from both sides of the street. So when I saw both of them, I knew who they were. So I hit myself on the counter. I don't want them to see me. So they came in. She asked for shoes. And then the Lebanese guys noticed that I was, because usually when the women come to help ice for shoes, I go and help them to try their shoes and tell them how beautiful the shoes are, show them the mirror for them to walk in so they know, you know. But this time I was hiding myself. He didn't say anything. So my, my, my mom and, and my twin brother left. They didn't buy anything. But what my twin brother noticed was that in the same store, when you're standing facing this way, there's a mirror that hanging up so he could see me. And he knew it was me. So as soon as he got out, he told his mom, the mom, the person I saw in that store that something. The mom said, no. I'm giving you these stories, not so much of what, but I want you to understand that the progressive in Liberia, they must be considered as redeemer. If you think otherwise, you have the right to it. You have the right to it. But those of us who have at least can read a little bit now, looking back at those days, there are two groups in Liberia that saved that country, the progressive 
and a football player of Liberia, your Mama Musa, your Abba Na, your 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 Samuel Samuel To, your 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 your, your Kofi Bruce, your 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 your, your, your uh, uh, all of the best player, okay, uh, Santo Maria, okay, uh, uh, Mr. Gay, the teacher. Those people saved that country for a very long time. Because when you're having football game, nobody cares whether they're hungry or not. The fee is packed. When you have Barrow and IE, no confusion. So that's, those are the people that really help to bring that country to where it is today. And I don't mind saying that, but let me go back. So the, the woman said, okay, let's go back. So they came back. But this time they came with purpose to try to know now that something to is in that store. So when she came, she said, I like that shoes over there, but I want your store board to help me. <laughs> I want your store board to help me to put my shoes on. I have no other choice. So I came back to the man. I said, Sansin, what are you doing here? I said, my, I'm working you. I said, okay. All right, how's school? I was not in school. I beg you. I was going to be in seventh grade, working at school. GW gets in high school at that time. At that time, interestingly, Honorable Wilson Tapper. Wilson Tapper was then our professor, economic professor at GW gets in night. But when he comes to school to teach us, when, when, when Mr. Tapper finished teaching, you want to go drive trouble and an entire two week party out of, out of Montreal, no matter what. Because you're so pissed of the thing that he spent, he will be telling you. But anyway, so she said, "How school?" I said, "Oh, fine, ma." So okay. So this left. And Victor told her at that time there was a young man who she was helping, but the man, the young man, got in the tenth grade. So she sent the young man to BWI. So the place that the administrator, the their position was vacant. So Victor reminded her. So they came back again. Say, Samson, come to the ministry tomorrow. So, okay. And the rest was history. I went over to the ministry. She gave me the paper. I took it to finance ministry to put my knee down. I was a kid there from that point on. But that was not it. Before that, I used to go to work in the morning, sleep all day because I've been out all night. And she knows that. So she used to tell me, you cannot live like this this is not life you got tomorrow crime man wet tomorrow i enjoy my same maria mom you said tomorrow they said oh okay ma, i hear you so one day she decided I, i'm cheap she literally forced me forced me to learn so she decided and i was the only person those of you that, that were at the ministry of education 1970 Seven, seventy-eight, seventy-nine. Those of you that were at the Ministry of Education on the sixth floor, you know I was the only person on our in our hallway, the only person on the entire sixth floor, cadet that has their own office. They only build a boot for me specifically. I mean, I see anybody who who, who was at the Ministry at the time, they will tell you. I was going to say Ice Doctor George Bode, but he, he probably don't even remember now. But anyhow, so. The bill of boot for me, she gave me the small typewriter to learn. After the people finished doing all that typing, they gave me the carbon copy. And then she would say, type. So I started typing without looking up to the day. At that time, my speed, typing was not easy. It's gone down now. But today, I can still type without even looking. I can type. Yes, the thing that you're supposed to know that I can type. You see the two finger? When you have your keyboard, whether laptop or whatever, look on it. Okay? Letter J, it has a it has a mark on it. Look on it. Letter F, it has a mark on it. Your 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 two index, your two finger like this. One go on J, one go on F. They have the mark. That's how you know how to move your finger to A, B, C, and all that kind of stuff. And she was showing me. I know that. So, but anyhow, another thing she showed me. She tried her best. Sometimes she would invite. Uh, or more Jackson F. Doe to the office. And she would tell me, Samson, this is a countryman. But look how educated he is. Highly educated. 
and Jackson Elder was his son. Education business, you can't play with well. ah, Okay, okay, okay. So all of those things didn't move me. You know what moved me? She brought, they brought in Dr. Bole. I believe it was 1970, at the end of 77, 78, I believe. And Dr. Bole was assigned with her. So she invited Dr. Bole in the office that morning. And I came in the office. I was dancing because I'm going to eat your rock. So she called me in with Dr. Bullet in, in her office. She called me in. She said, same thing. I've been telling you about book business, education, how serious is it? This is a crime man, PhD. Me, Sansin To, who been going to graduate meeting in all over Monterey. I know all the book people. The only book man, crime man, book man, PhD. I know that trouble by her. Then you come and tell me the young man, PhD, crime man. I said, okay, man. She said, you don't believe me? I said, no, I believe you. And he said, I cry, man. Then I started speaking crime to myself. What kind of crime, man, light skin like they will come be PhD? And then Dr. Bole said to me, you don't find my, I couldn't believe it. From that point on, when I went home, true story, a friend of mine called Eddie Bayon is dead now. And a few other guys, if I wanted them, I met him total. I went, I told him, I'm not going out anymore. I'm not smoking anymore. I'm not drinking anymore. I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to go to school. From there, I started taking the school business serious. If you remember those days, the way people now in Monterey, you see the young people, then they put a backpack on their bike. Those days, you don't do backpack. You have the rubber, rubber uh, 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 bag. It has a zipper in the front of it. You put your material in it, zip it up, put it under your arm. Then you're considered one of the bigger book person in Monterey. I lie, my people. Oh, man. Am I lying? No. Okay. So she started telling me some of the things that was going on. She said, many of you come from the countryside. To even stay in Monterey to go to school. You know, first of all, no fool. And, but yes, some people here training, they're putting themselves to school. She said, go to the market, the Baker market. And I know about that because I used to live in the barracks. She said, go to the Baker market. You will find you all later then. You know what they're doing with that money? They're sending their children to school. You have the opportunity. So I decided I was going to take it serious. I took it serious. I started learning. Then the power business came up. Dr. Bully was involved with the progressive, but he didn't want to show too much of that. And one afternoon, we heard Dr. Buddha, you know, gonna, he was in trouble with the government because of his association with Pi and stuff like that. Pi used to have meetings at, 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 at the uh, uh, coconut plantation. Some of us would go there. But when she started pushing me more, and the, the sad thing, well, I was not an LU student, but I wanted to participate. I couldn't read much, but I wanted to participate. So, and I'm talking about the progressive here tonight. So here's the interesting thing about the progressive. I am the, from the progressive, from the power wing, not Moja. Moja, only, only time my association with Moja was Dr. Tibote and the Tibote slipper. They, I used to wear those, okay? That's my association with Moja. But I'm, I'm fully, fully with power. And so people at like Deacon Collins, when they read to talk to us, they would not speak the English that for both people, they speak in the English for us to yay. And they used to incite a lot of people, a lot of us. So let's go to April 14. With all my involvement, now, let's go to April 14. One Saturday morning, as a kid there, you're supposed to clean the office. Make sure when the minister cut them kind of money, the place clean. That's your job. So I went in to go say something, say he went clean. Usually I don't clean nothing. I go sit down. I have food. But anyway, this particular day, we knew the night before that there was going to be a demonstration. But at the same time, when the heat started coming, we also got word that night that they were going to cancel the demonstration. True story. They were going to cancel the demonstration. So that morning, they told us the night before that we were supposed to meet at Pi headquarters. You know what Pi headquarters was? 
the MPUA on Getty Street. And Dr. Formula is going to talk about that here, where he and Dr. Sawyer went. So we went there that morning to meet. So when we got there, you know, at first I didn't take it serious. There were not a lot, a lot of people are not there. And part of that, that little office, they have some sort of a balcony. Not balcony, but it's, it's around some concrete block they put around. And people stay in there. And I, I bet you, I keep saying, it's no bigger than, from my imagination, and from what I can still remember, it's no bigger than 25 feet long, I mean, 25 feet wide, with maybe 30 or 45 feet uh, 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 long. So why they were there, people started coming in. Dean Carter, I remember this, stood in the middle on a, on a table with a bullhorn to announce, you know, that this thing here, most likely we're not going to have it. While he was in the process, the police came and, and, and lined themselves up against the fence the 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 uh, graveyard fence on Getty Street, and the, one of these light skin guy, I don't remember his name. I still don't know his name. But light skin police, I believe, was captain or lieutenant. He suggested, in fact, ask that everybody that was there for power, they should get off the side where the government side where they were going power property, and this little place here, and you have over two three hundred people at a time at that particular moment, to go and fit in that place. So he ordered his police to put everybody in that little, little square. I remember that. Putting those people in there now, this is how it started, that money. When they squeezed everybody in there, people started running. Because if you, if you don't know how to handle yourself, you will fall down in, the, in, in Sony. Because Sony, Sony right there, the, the, the Sony ditch is right there. You will fall down in it. So the other people took off. Benson Street started going up towards Broad Street. Demonstration started. Am I making it up? Those of you that remember it, am I making it up? Demonstration started. The rest riot started right there. Me now, my little brother in the army, they went home. He went home. He was there. He was there, but he wasn't dressed in his army uniform. He went home now, got dressed. And then when he came by, came to my house on Camp Johnson Road. By that time, I went home. But I was in the street. People, you know, first we were holding plum, uh, plum, plum, plum tree branch tight. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So the people started shooting tear gas. And the same people that were shooting the tear gas, the police, the army people started telling us the medicine. Go and take potato green, rub it like this, and rub it in your eye, on your face. The, the tear gas will go away. And people started running on, on Buzo Cutter. We got to have that Sony right there. The potato grow wild over there. People started bringing it up, started sharing it. Shooting started. My brother told me, if I see you out here, I'll shoot you myself. That was the end of my demonstration. I went home. That's my involvement. Okay, so I know what I'm talking about. Now, now that I've given you all my own story, okay, 1979, right? Rest right. People die. People die. People die. A cousin of mine, he's in, he's in Monreal right now. A guy, the army guy, twice it happened uh, before me. The first one was on Camp Johnson Road. Guy jumped out of his car, holding his gun like that. When he jumped out, the gun went off. Kill one person right before us on Camp Johnson Road. The second one, my cousin, the same in same situation, the guard went off, hit his leg. I remember that. Okay, so but I know many of you that are listening know some of these stories. Many of you have similar story like this. All right, but why am I saying this? So when you come out to say the progressive ruin your country. It is very difficult for some of us to so accept. Whenever these things comes out, some of us will come out and come. I, I, I got big mouth. And I remember most of these things. So I'm not going to sit down here. So the progressive were held responsible when, when they went after them. They threw fear of them in jail. And if I'm not going to address that here in his stuff that I'm going to be reading later. They threw fear of them in jail. And for the trial, 
My mom, Dr. Bertha Baker, example, asked me to go to the trial and listen. I went. And God God who have it, they let me in. He, they, they, who am I? Well, I was there the first, first come, first set. They let me in. And when I went to Temple of Justice the other day, I, I was asking the guy who was uh, uh, giving me a tour of the building, I was asking, where was this place? Because I don't quite remember now. And he was telling me, it was right there, down there. So while we were in there, for these people to have the trial, chasing. Joseph Chesson, who was also killed during the coup, was then considered a poor man lawyer. In fact, he was considered, people call him Perry Mason in Liberia those days because he would represent poor people most of the time. So he, he decided to hang himself with the progressive. So people knew he was going to be representing the progressive. And while the court was in proceeding, Chesson walked from the other side, come in, and the entire place went wild. They shut the proceeding down, took the boys and back in jail. That was my end of the court section. Let's move on. The only thing that I've never witnessed, which is a major, major, major story, is the war. I was not in Liberia during the war. And I feel bad for my brothers and sisters, those of you that watched that. It's terrible to go through that. And I bet you many of you still have nightmare of these things to watch your relative get killed before your eyes and there's nothing you can do. You can't fight, you can't do anything. And that guilt is with you. So some of us sympathize. But for people who are in leadership position, who's supposed to help our brothers and sisters, and they will continue to ferment these kinds of erroneous idea that the progressive ruin their country. It, for me, it is unacceptable. You can say it, but I don't have to accept it. And I have to come back and say something. So, you know, a few weeks ago, Dr. Sawyer passed, of course, and last week, I believe, he was buried. And so, before I go into his, his uh, stuff, let me just show you, even in among the progressive, there's always been this, just like here during the civil civil right, the heydays of the civil right movement. You have the group with Dr. Uh, uh, Martin Luther King, and you have another group that was with with with, with uh, 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 Malcolm X. And according to a story, how they used to pull and pull because that certain people want certain way, other people same thing with the progressive. The Moja group wanted certain way, the the power wanted another way, you know. But at the same time, they knew exactly they wanted one man, one vote. That There's no dispute about that. If you were to ask Dr. Tipote right now, say, where's the end result at that time that you're looking for? One man, one vote. If you had the opportunity to talk to a, a, a Bacchus Mafia at the time, he would tell you one man, one vote. That's all. And this is what we have now. So how can you say the progressive ruin your country? So among us, there's, there's always been this. And let me play this here. So recently during the barrier, Dr. According to the story, Dr. Formula name was left out out of the group that's supposed to pay tribute. I don't know why. And I'm not going to speculate. We're still family. We're still family. That's not going to break. The hero, our hero is no longer with us, but that's not going to break us. We're still family. We're still family. The progressive is going nowhere. The sad thing about Liberia and Liberians is that I thought that they would have given the opportunity to progressive to show them what they have. They did. And you, you, you just to show you how much, how much selfishness the progressive are. They are not selfish like many, many, many politicians. When the time came, when Liberians were dying and they were looking for leaders to lead them, Dr. Sawyer, who has been in the vanguard of the progressive movement, many of us consider him a hero. He didn't say, no, I want to be president. No, no. They had a rule to say if you are an interim president, 
interim government president. You can't seek re, you can't seek any kind of elect, election to be president. He accepted that. He accepted that. So how can you now tell us that the progressive and the educated Liberians ruin your country? When you needed the progressive, they shows up. They help you to understand the bad deeds of Tui Party and his people. These are our own brothers. In fact, when I did the formula show here the last time, where the formula uh, father was tried because they say he'd be one of the overthrow or whatever. And one question was asked by GAAPA. Who sold us? You people say we are we, 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 uh, 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 a miracle Liberian. How did we become a miracle? Why? Who sold us? He asked that question. And it's in the place in the book. Look it up, folks. We felt bad. Yes, our brothers and sisters are now free to come home. But what do they do when they got to the shore of Mussolini? What do they do when they had the opportunity to bring all of us together? What happened? And Honorable Blambo Nelson stated that clearly. He said the country today, the issue we have in this country today, then just that. It was the settlers who broke this country down. Go look it up. Honorable Blamo Nelson, on one of his speeches, in one of his speeches, he made that statement. And I believe that. If these people have come in to say, look, we have been slaves in the United States for years. We know the bad treatment that we suffer in the hands of the white, white, white rulers. We're here now in our own area. My skin and the people's skin are the same. Let's start everything perfectly. Since we have the opportunity to be educated or know a little bit, let's educate these people and then bring them on board. They didn't do that. They decided to make the, the indigenous, to make them slaves in their own country. My goodness. And you said the progressive the progressive expose all of those things to the young people, to the young cadets, the cadres of the freedom fighters in Liberia were exposed to these things by the progressive. How then can you say the progressives for your country? Only those who wanted to maintain the two we party rule will say that. And you should be on the other side to say, no, you can't say that. The progressive asks for one man, one vote. One man, one vote. And we have it. So for me, I'm happy. But I will do all that I can not to defend the, the, the entire process of the progressive behavior or whatever happened in like Liberia killing and what have you. And nobody can defend that. That's understandable. Some of us suffer. Many of us suffer. That's understand a self-revolution. If you didn't want to die, stay in the village. Once you came in and joined the revolution, it's up to you and between you and your God. If God said you can't make it, you can't make it. It's nothing any one of any one of us can do. We grieve, we cry. Some of us are still crying, but that's revolution, and you have to understand it. It's clear. But for you now to say that you're progressive, ruin your country, it, it, is, it is unacceptable. It is unacceptable. As, as I was saying, let's listen to uh, Sister Mieta Formula, who was a little bit upset that her brother was left out. And then after that, I will go into this. My last one will be when I, when I read this book booklet, you know, when Dr. Formula writes, he doesn't play. So there'll be some words that I'll be chewing. I can't pronounce them. They, they got too big for me. Okay. But that's besides the point. One of the things, those of us that have been following Dr. Formula over the years, he doesn't say much. He doesn't just come and start writing. But if somebody prick 
something in him. And when he write to write, he put it down for the entire world to know. Whatever secret that you think you have, he's coming up with it. Go, go, go do some of his research, do research on some of his writing, and you know what I'm talking about. So let's listen to Sister Miata Family. Okay, she was a little bit upset that her brother was left out in the program for uh, the the process during the funeral of Doctor Sai. And yet, you purposely, you will not forget it, you purposely omitted Dr. Fambule. The struggle continues in this country. So what? I'm sorry, because first of all, give me a break. What is the Speaker of the House going to say about Amos Sawyer? That he went there to do a tribute. What is the Minister of Foreign Affairs going to say about Amos Sawyer? Do you understand? Yes, he had indiscreet people from nowhere coming to talk about a man they didn't know, that they have condemned for the past 40 years in our history. Amos was our nucleus of the progressive. You claim we destroyed this country. That it broke people's for their country. So why you're getting state funeral? Why you're getting state funeral? Why honor your own PhDs until you're why you want to be called doctors like them? This is the most hypocritical society. And if it doesn't change, we're going nowhere. We'll be 2050 and we'll still be our shit. There you have it. That's Sister Mianta Family. Now let's go into the statement that I made earlier. <clears throat> Let's listen to our hero, Dr. Sawyer. And then I'll go after playing two videos. I want to play two videos for Dr. Sawyer. I thought they were very important to explain himself. Why, what was his role in this evil of all our issues in Liberia? What was his role during the war? Did he decide to leave? What happened? So he got involved. Why? Let's listen to this. It's very interesting. I want you to pay keen attention to some of the statement that Dr. Sayer is going to be making here for us tonight. He's our hero, a progressive hero. There's no question in eyes. And, and, and one thing I didn't mention, and, and Dr. Formula is going to talk about, it was the mayor race. They call him the broom. They call him the broom because he was going to sweep. And Tui Party and his people recognized that he was getting ready to flop them, politically that is, and they decided to cut the election off. It, uh, interestingly, Dr. St Dr. Formula will make mention that as well. Interestingly, in one of the books that I read some time ago, in 1982, there was supposed to be an election. And in the mayor race, uh, according to uh, uh, Dr. Formula and, and many of the progressive, uh, Dr. Sawyer, have decided, in fact, do missing did mention that during the, 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 the funeral, that Dr. Sawyer decided to test as to whether the government have any kinds of room to allow the plebeians to fully participate in an electoral process in Liberia. Again, what he was looking for, one man, one vote. That's all. Let's listen to Dr. Sawyer. Uh, I got one, I'll play this one, then I'll play the other one. Okay, let's go ahead. Let me say here personally, I never supported Charles Taylor. Not a dime did I contribute at any time to the support of Charles Taylor. What was I don't hold it against anybody who did, because at that time, let's, re let's remember, the Taylor uprising here was popular. Large numbers of people, remember the time they were saying, we want Chucky, let Chucky come? There were lots of people who supported Charles Taylor. Tom Oyu has said repeatedly that in the meetings in which the question of support for Charles Taylor came about, I staunchly opposed it. Did the, AC, did the ACDL as an organization adopt any posture on the conflict as and did it advance any proposals as to how 
it saw the conflict being brought to an end? I think we, we supported the proposal for an interim government. Do you not remember this time there were, there were several proposals floating around? And let me say, everybody, every Liberian wanted some kind of a solution. The Interfed Mediation Committee was making some proposals. Everybody was trying to tweak at those proposals to find a way forward. Some Liberians here signed the document and said, well, let's have a, a uh, what do you call it, a transitional government for six months with Mr. Taylor and let him thereafter turn over to somebody. He must be a, a, a transitional leader. There were others who came up with proposals say, no, let us put in a transitional government and in six months, let's hold elections. I will not hold it against anybody who came up with a, an idea. The key here is that all of these ideas were rejected by Mr. Taylor. That is the important issue. There are those not that people were not trying. They were trying because they wanted a way forward. Even the Interfed Mediation Committee's proposal that became the ECOWAS peace plan, he adopted and then rejected. We went to Yamasokro several times. He put proposals on the table. Everybody agreed to them, and then he rejected them. He went to Geneva. We signed an agreement there. He signed himself in Hufwe Buenis residence. By the time he got back into, into Ivory Coast, he said that signature was not his genuine signature. So I think these are the issues that are significant here, and not the efforts of a lot of individuals who, in good faith, we're looking for one way or another to move this process forward. Let me tell you what was even a better deal. Mr. Taylor and I met in uh, the offices of President Iadima in Togo. President Iadima set it up that we would have one-on-one. -on -one. We went in a room and I said to him, Charlie, we need to find a way to bring peace in Liberia. I am ready to step aside any time if there are ways in which we can help you because we know you have incurred expenses in all of this fighting. If there is any way we can make your expense part of a national debt so that we can then go to elections, we'll be ready to do so. You know what he said to me? He said, Baba, I got expenses you can't understand. That was Charles Taylor's response. All right? We met several times in Hufwe Buani's house. In Yamasukro, we had a meeting at which, as I said this morning, Mr. Taylor complained that he didn't trust Ekomo, but he had all of this territory under his control and he wanted to go to elections as quickly as possible. This was how the Senegalese came here. Remember the Senegalese de were deployed in, I think, in Lofa or someplace in a number wow. of other places, in Vahom. All right. And there were lots of people who were deployed, lots of forces deployed around this country. We were all set poised to go to elections once those forces were, in fact, deployed. As soon as those forces began the deployment, people around the country began to gain confidence. Many of them surged to Monrovia. Mr. Taylor saw this. And by that time, suspected that he will have a difficulty winning elections. And put every obstacle in the way of going to the ballot box as a result of the Yamasukra meetings. So there was ample time, ample time, ample opportunities. The two things were being at stake at that time, were at stake at the time. One, that there should be disarmament. People must not vote with a gun to their heads. Two, there must be an electoral process. We must not just, you know, anoint somebody who had shot his way into power. What change would it have been? So the holding of free and fair elections, especially at a time when everybody knew that Charles Taylor was very popular, and the longer he talked, and the longer he talked, there brought doubts, his own confidence perhaps in his ability to win, to win elections, diminished. 
until a brand new situation presented itself years later. So I think it is a misperception to think that one proposal among scores of proposal coming from various Liberian quarters, including from the Interfaith Mediation Committee, that any of those at any moment in those early stages would have made a difference. That is a stretch that is much too far, given the circumstances we know, much too far to accept. Well, I don't know. I, I, like I say, when, when I had a one-on-one -on -one with Mr. Taylor, this is what he told me, that he had obligations. He never, you know, spoke further on the obligations, what they were, uh, and, and how he intended to, to meet them. He talked about uh, ob obligations. I do know that President Hufi Bwani seemed to have been convinced during the Yamasoka series from what he had heard Mr. Taylor say that he could win elections and that the old man wanted to get those forces that Taylor wanted deployed so that we could move on. And by 1992, he was at a total loss that even with the deployment of those forces, nothing was happening. He called me and I had a meeting with him and he said, I don't know what is happening to your brother, Mr. Taylor. Your compatriot has let me down because I was hoping that by now I would have been able to solve this problem. This was Hufwe Bwani one year before he died. All of those who had thought that the Yamasukra series of talks would have borne some fruit were disappointed because at the end of the day, all of the demands that were made by Taylor, he reneged on all of them. And you say the progressive are the, are the, the fault of all of the issues in Liberia. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? That is our hero. One of the heroes in, our, in our, what we believe to be the progressive movement. And this man didn't just start this thing overnight. He's highly educated. Immediately when the shooting started, he could have said, you know what, forget it. I can go and live anywhere in the world and make decent living. But he stayed. He stayed. And many of them, many of the progressives stayed. And this is what we're saying to you. If we want the way forward, and we should think we're on the right route. And Dr. Formula gonna make that make we're gonna gonna point it out to us here shortly. We're on the right route. I mean, the one man, one vote. All of these things that are happening, the Dr. Weir, Kumi, Dr. Baka, those are just stuff. Uh, folks, think about it. They have other countries that have been doing this democracy business for hundreds and hundreds of years. They're still fighting to get it right. We just started. 1980, before 1980, what were we doing? We were voting for one person in one town, two town. Used to produce, even though total town population was more, no more than what, maybe 1,005, if at all, not even 1,000. But total town used to produce over a million vote. Because something told you to vote when I was like, well, maybe five, six years old, seven, eight times. I go through the booth, call a different name, come out, come back again, call another name, come back. They made me do that. You got to go vote. Young people were voting. Five, six years old. And now since 1980, things have changed. Liberia is not going back. So you can sit here and cry all you want that the progressive mess your country up. We're not going back. One man, one vote is the rule and it's staying. Liberia is going to be developed. 
Liberia is going to get there. It might not happen in our lifetime, but we're on the right right. There's no way. No, we're not turning back. They're not turning back. So now, let me play this last video before I go on to read, because I have to open the lines up for brothers and sisters who want to make a comment, to make their comment. Uh, we're gonna have to disagree, but let's do it with respect, as I stated before. So let's 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 go on with that. Let me play. Let me just let me just play this other one here. Now this is when this this one I want you to play. You saw where uh, uh, the hero, Doctor Sawyer, say I never contributed. To anything to, to give him a dime in this country. You heard that. So many of the progressives did not, did, did not contribute anything. There were some, he said, that was supporting Charles Taylor for all the reasons. But that was nothing in their business to say this is an organization. The organization took the, the, their organization took a, took a stand not to support. But you cannot, because some organizations take a stand, you cannot bar the individual. Then you're not a real progressive. Every one of us belong to a club, our organization. But we are individual. I can do what I want to do with myself. It's none of your business as an organization. When I come in into functioning of the into the functioning process of the organization, whatever the group support, I as a member of that process was supported. But when I leave, I on my own. You can even consider uh, 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 anybody who supported it. Some of them were progressive. But let's listen to Dr. Sayan. This is a very interesting one. When he came in as an interim president, let's listen to some of the things that he, some of the hoops that he has to go through just to maintain safety just to make sure many Liberians survive on his leadership this is nothing this is nothing easy to do and then after that we'll go ahead and read uh dr formula uh, uh uh tribute and then we will open the line let's go ahead let me go ahead and play dr sawyer and then i will come back to read dr formula can understand Commissioner, the frustrations of many people who wanted this war to end and wanted the interim government to really move and move with authority. I can understand the frustration because the delays, the kinds of tactics that many of the warring groups took while they uh, were digging diamonds and golds and, and while they were selling logs and all of that sort of thing, was frustrating to the process. But for me, an agreement is an agreement. You operate within the framework of what you have agreed to do. And also, let me say that even if in some of the instances we had developed a different policy posture. We had to operate in consonance with the West African forces. If you have a situation, as I explained the other day, uh, yesterday, where just maintaining the ECO, ECOWAS forces, ECOMOG, as a coherent force on the ground, took a huge degree of effort. You wouldn't believe that there was a point early when the Sierra Leone contingent was on the verge of disintegration, lack of resources. There were times when the interim government had from its meager resources to sort of backstop some of the expenses of that group to keep them, keep them here. There were times when we had to make lightning visits to Ghana with the purpose of explaining to the Ghanaian authorities why it was important not to contemplate pulling out. There were times when there was a change in Nigeria 
when President Babangida left the stage. The interim government there was bent on pulling out in six months. Had served us notice that Nigeria would leave in six months. Can you imagine what the disaster would have been here? We had to go and have discussions with uh, the interim leader. Um, this was before Abacha came in. <clears throat> to convince him to uh, Shonikon, I think was his name, uh, Mr. Shonikon, to, to hold on and not to, in fact, uh, let things go. President Lansana Conte was a staunch supporter of the forces. And he was gaining impatience and saying, look, if my brothers and others are not very serious about this, I will either have to go alone or pull out. Because Guinea had an immediate interest given its proximity. The Ivorians, you will recall it was through Ivory Coast that the forces, the NPFL forces entered here. We went through several hoops with President Hufu Bwani trying to get him to focus on, 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 on in a serious way on, on getting this, uh, this, this conflict under, under, under control. So what I'm saying to you is on the one hand, the international juggling we, we had to do to keep these forces on the ground and keep them engaged here in Liberia on the one hand, and on the other hand, the political infighting that we had to contend with just right here on the ground among forces. Imagine a government whose legitimacy depended solely on the buy-ins, the support it gets from a range of actors. You didn't win elections. We didn't win elections. So there was no mandate from the people in the sense of a vote at the, at the polls. The legitimacy of the government was determined largely by how many groups, how many political parties, how many factions, all of this will buy into it, will support it. So the more you have people on the verge of wanting to dissociate themselves, or threatening to dissociate themselves, you know, trying to blackmail you, you know, the more difficult it is. Uh, so when you have people who themselves are the cause of the problem and at the same time saying the government cannot solve the problem, then you know they're not very serious. When someone will go on the radio in the morning and tell the BBC, uh, this government is no good, and then come in the afternoon and say, oh, don't mind me, that's just morale. Now, how do you make progress with people like those? Uh, how do you get the kind of rooted international legitimacy? How does our country put a good face forward? So this is the kind of, of, of picture. I just want to give you a feel. If ECOMOG were a force that reported to the interim government, it would have been a different picture. Or if the interim government had the resources and had the support of the West African region and the local support to raise an army, it would have been a different case altogether. But there were religious people here who were saying, oh, no, 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 we, we don't want extra fighting. There were people who enjoyed this safe haven but were supportive of the NPFL, who were also fomenting these difficulties. There were others who had personal ambitions of one kind or, 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 or another. As things unfolded, we saw more and more of this. So the, the image of an orderly arrangement here that many people had, I can appreciate. And in a way, maybe I should take credit for it because we performed in a way that people thought that things were all right. But things were not all right. It took a lot of hard work to maintain just the level of legitimacy and the level um, of, um, of operations that we had going here. And you say that the progressive ruin your country, you can be serious.
The struggle continues. I was Hitler. He was in Europe. I said I was Hitler. Hitler was in Europe. I the struggle continues, folks. I mean, it's not over yet. It's not, we're not quite there yet, but we're getting there. So, with this kinds of thing, that I, the two videos that I just showed you of our leaders, will you still say that the progressive, the educated, not me, I'm a liberal progressive, but the educated progressive ruin your country? I don't think so. Now, let me take this time now to read to you where Dr. Famler style final bow uh, to our hero. Of course, he was not uh, at the podium to give the uh, uh, tribute at the time, but he wrote. And I thought it would be better for me, or for me now, I thought it was good for me to come here tonight to read it. Now, remember, I'm from Toe Town. I can't read. So don't hold me to any of these kinds of stuff. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. But when Dr. Formula writes, the English language says it can take you from Vitaan all the way to Chuba. So hey, you're, you're, you're bear with me. No, on a very serious note, I'll do my best. So this is what Dr. Formula wrote. And after that, after this reading, I will put it up. And I'm doing this reading. Not only for Dr. Famula, but those of us that have the opportunity to read it, and many of you, you can go on Dilla Observer. You, can, you should be able to see it there and be able to read it yourself as well. But just let's 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 go through it. And this is what he said here. So in fact, the title Dr. F Dr. H. B. Formula salutes the late interim president, Dr. Emma Sawyer. He said they brought you home finally, Claudia, man of vision and weight. Philosopher of paradigm and concept, leader of man, a fusion of best and brightest, a great and noble African, humble servant of your people and republic. You have come home to rest forever in the bosom of the motherland. And we, knowing, we who know and follow you, will now take our final bow. How does one, how does one once announce the death of a great patriot and sword fighter for social justice? How does one inform the people of this Africa that a fierce nationalist and a passionate pan african and a hero of many battles and an intellectual of sublime in intelligence has left us forever? I am reminded of the word of Jose Martyr on hearing of the death of Simon Bouval, the liberator of Latin America. And Dr. Famla is a well-read man, so he know all these things there. You can't speak with calm about a person who never knew calm. Of Bolivia, you can only speak from mountain tops or amid thunder and lightning or with a fist of freedom in one hand and the corpse of tyrant at, the, at your feet. Let the hills and mountains of our black republic echo the disheartening scream. A Messiah is no more. The village and villages, I mean the valleys and villages of our county, country, in the hills and sacks where those who own it here of this legend do it. Let the story be told of a humble man who felt for the people and lived his entire life thinking, dreaming, and struggling for their progress. That's our hero he's talking about. This man with so much courage, a leader of a man, a humble fighter for his people, freedom and advancement, a political tactician and strategist who combined political ideas, philosophical concept, sociology, and political economy to achieve a synthesis of programmation and parics. And then place all in one hand of young cadres for future battles. 
that resolve around justice, liberty, and equality has left us forever. And you want to tell me that these people did something to your country? Here was a man, the greatest of his comrades, the most brilliant of his colleagues, and the most decisive in fight, in the fight for justice, but with calculating genius of disarming the enemy with compromising gadgets that, that did not erode his conviction. Did you get that? Okay. He was my friend, comrade, and brother for 51 years in the struggle and now from afar. I bow in honor of his heroic memory. The year was 1971, when our path crosses, crossed to be forever entangled in the history of our republic. He had traveled to Freetown, Sierra Leone, to do research for his dissertation at the, North, at the Northwest University in the United States. In Sierra Leone, he had to use the library and research facility at four-year Bay, Bay College, the University of Sierra Leone. I was a junior year student reading politics and philosophy and a noted student activist. As president of the Devonshire Nuncore Hall of Residence, I had access to two guest rooms and surplus food on the high table every day. The comrades at Fordham Bay College informed me that there were two Liberian graduate students from the United States using the library. I want to look for them and find the two uh, fellow standing before the administrative building. They were, uh, they were Emma Sawyer and Byron Tai, both doctoral students in the United States. We introduced ourselves. I asked where they reside in Freetown, and Amos replied that it was in a little hotel downtown and that they commuted to the campus of Foyer Bay College every morning. I told them that it was not necessary and that they could use one of the guest rooms in Devison uh, Nico Hall and take their meal in the morning, afternoon, and evening in the dining room used by students in my hall. They accepted and transferred their things from the hotel downtown to the campus. This is how it all started especially with Emmons, the comradeship, the brotherhood in struggle for, with blood, tears, and being witness together of the martyrdom of some of our Galilean comrades. On campus, Emmons visited my room. On several occasions, we spoke as if we had known each other for a long time. After his research work, he and Byron returned to the United States. I never heard from Byron, but Emma sent a letter of thanks and appreciation, which I still have in my library after 51 years. In that letter, he mentioned what he noticed about my interaction with my fellow students and concluded by saying that we must examine possibility on our return to Liberia. I understood him quite quite well. As for the student at Foyer Bay College, I knew what they told him as I was one of the leader of the left-wing faction on campus and Secretary General of the Pan-African Nucleomnesine Student Organization. I wrote by telling him that I was ready for any struggle, regardless of the sacrifice. We did consider possibility when we met again at the University of Liberia in 1978. Emma was my chairman in the Department of Political Science. We shared the same office, and in between lectures, we discussed the politics of liberation in the terror world. He was in Moja, he was in Moja, and I joined the organization as a stint on, on the politics of liberation was in sync with my ideas. In Angola, it was the MPLA that we endorsed, not the tribal formulation of family, FLAN. 
And you need you need that in Mozambique. It was not Falamo, not Romeo, and other surrogate of apartheid South Africa. In Namibia, it was Swapo. In Southwest, uh, in South Africa, it was ANC. And on a question of African revolution, it was the new, uh, 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 Nicromans approach of uncompromising uh, opposition to racism, exploitation, linear uh, colonialism. It was in Moja that I studied Amon at close quarter. He was unassuming but dignified, a good listener with a keen intellect. He was highly respected and revered by all cadres and militants. I could see that he was a deep thinker, a giant in the body frame of an average individual, a courageous militant who did not shy away from danger, and a fighter who stood away in the front, in the forefront of militants and never behind them. He went into the uh, uh, mirror campaign for Monrovia, and I asked him why futile exercise. He told me that the system had to be tested in order to see whether there were democratic organs in, in place for popular participation and the endangerment of the people. He campaigned everywhere, even in the luxury corridor of the elites. I went with him to West Point and other slum community where elements of the elite who supported him could not accompany us. I joke with him about the campaign radicals who want a change from the stupefying grips of the two-way party, but could not go into the hearts of the massive. He questioned me about unity. He questioned me about the unity against sectarianism. I understood and respected him as our leader who was determined to build a unit a, a, a united front. He was also our teacher who led by his intellectual brilliance. The mayoral campaign was stopped by the government because of the tension in the city. He had no doubt, I had no doubt that he would have, he would have won and possibly lead, lead us into the presidential campaign that was still for 1982. The rice demonstration of April 14, 1979, endured me to this courageous and selfless leader profoundly. On the eve, in the darkness of night, he led our delegation from Moja to the graveyard on Getty Street. Remember I told you that? On Getty Street. To meet with the delegation from the Progressive Alliance of Liberia, PAC. The meeting was interesting for what a review about PAC. The leader of PAC had, had called for the demonstration and our delegation wanted to know about preparation and the internal of the match. It must come, it must come and self-assure acts about the demonstration going array and the means at the disposal of the leadership of PAC in case of any eventuality. I knew Amos and I understood his quarry. This man was a deep thinker and a revolutionary. Pat, excellent. The Pat leadership told us then that it had uh, brought medical alcohol and plaster to cover a uh, superficial wound. Amos said then that the reaction of the authority could be serious as any confrontation will signal a major change to the two-way party in the contemporary era. The power leadership seemed not to be aware of any impending disaster and said and said as much. Even said that I would be more more point man and that our militant will participate in the demonstration in, in solidarity. We left the meeting and walked away in silence. When we got into Emma's car, he only asked, boo, this was the leader explanation, his way of expressing his in, in, immorality. 
doubt. He knew the consequence of a confrontation with the two-way party in an era of Africa resolve to deal with the uh, intransigence of colonialism by armed struggle. He was gifted in, in uh, prosperity, and no matter his doubt, he was aware of the logic of history being a student of foreign of Fona and the Algerian Revolution. My rhetoric to him was, these past fellow are on a suicide mission. Amos said nothing as we drove away. I knew the leader was thinking for us. At the end, he would lead us in the right direction. Against this background, background and with Amos at the office of Moja on the morning of April 14, 1970, I left for the headquarters of Pi as instructed by him after taking a uh, slight bow and listening to his caution. Bo, be careful. I promise the leader that I will be and head for the office of Pi on the morning of April 14, 1979. I had no fear as I knew that our leader was in the office thinking and analyzing. I returned to the office an hour later to, to, to brief Amos. I told him what I have observed. He invited me to drive with him to his place in Senga to get some documents and be back at the office before noon. I knew he had many things on his mind. And, and the drive to his house would allow him to get my reaction to some of the uh, nagging issues. We arrived at his house, and he sent his lawyer house help, Benjamin, out to get some soft drink. I knew Amos drink beer, but he had sent for only soft drink. No doubt indifference to me as a uh, teetotaler. The, drink, the drinks came, and I joked that we were possibly having our last drink on earth. This is April 14, 1979. He signed as, as was his way when he was in a, a pensive mood. We drink quickly, quietly for a minute, and then from far, from afar, we heard the barrage of serene. The leader looked at me and ordered, Bo, time to go. We got up in his car, leaving Benjamin staring at us, staring at us with a look of sadness and incomprehension on his face. As Amon turned the car into the main thoroughfare, we saw an ambulance speeding on three on three tires on its way to the main hospital, and instinctively, the leader followed it. We got to the main emergency entrance and noticed the, the, noticed the removal of a, of a badly wounded young man from the ambulance. He had been shot in the left eye. Amos got down from the car and, and, and some health worker ran to him. He turned to see if I was uh, coming out and ordered that I stay in the car. My leader had spoken, and so I remained in the car. The health worker told him that the young man was, was the first fatality, that they were, uh, that they were many wounded uh, from gunshot already in the hospital. Amos got into the car and we drove back to the office on Atman Street in absolute quietude. There was no air condition in the car and as we drove around the headquarters of power, we could smell the carburetor and hear the circles of machine guns. I was gathering uh, anxiously and exclaimed, they are going to kill us all, and we have no guns to fight, to fight back. Amos said nothing as he drove on in a deep silence. We reached the office, but there were only two cadres around. Cadre mean uh, comrades, let's put it out. The rest of the militant and cadre had gone to join the demonstration when they saw the, the multitude moving in the direction of the office of power, it was then that a young man ran to Amos and told him that thousands of people were heading uh, for, for town 
but they have been blocked by the security forces from proceeding. The situation was tense. The young man said, and there, will, there could be a massacre. Amos, his courage showing through his uh, prancing eyes, told me that he was going across the bridge where the people had been stopped and that I should remain at the office. In the heat of the battle, one does not question the judgment of a brave and decisive leader. I stayed behind and Amos drove away. It was within an hour that another young man came running to the office. He told a story of how Amos had been stopped at the checkpoint by the security forces, but that he was determined to get into the middle of the crowd on the other side and talk to, to, the, to, to the people. They, have, they had developed a standoff, and the people who recognized Amos were screaming for him to be let through. The security forces were determined to keep him from the people, but our leader was determined to get across. At that moment, with tension rising and a deaf and a defiant people determined to reach into in town to make history or be murdered in the process, some studio men, their shirt, uh, 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 their shirt dripping in sweat and their uh, bosom bracing, reflecting their anger, pain, and tension, told Amos to get back into his car, which he did. The men, vulnerable of the lions that were coming into town, lifted Amos car from the street into the into the wild sidewalk, and he drove to meet his people. Interesting. I listened to the young man with joy and satisfaction, although anxious. This was the Amos that I knew, a courageous fighter, a leader of a man. I murmured to myself, only a leader like Amon would do such. Going to the people in a time of danger to reassure them a bounding of a comradeship, a message of standing together. My admiration grew for his freedom fighter, a man of idea and of immense strength, one with whom I could go to the barricade any day and any time. In all serious battle, especially revolutionary battle, men follow brave leaders, not the Kanrish uh, rascal who are too cowardly to put their lives on the line because they want, they want to survive and inherit power. Men of courage, commitment must uh, and commitment must be led by leaders of infinite decisiveness, revolutionary zeal, and superior intelligence. Here are the defining characteristics of the noble African, Amos C. Sawyer. A lion made in, in the image of a man, leader who sacrificed an, a genius of highest genre. After the massacre of the people Children on April 14, 1979, the authority threw us in dungeon cells to await our capitula uh, capitulation or execution, as like example, to those who wanted to question the historical lies of the exploitation and class dominance by two we party, of course. We were run up by, by the dozen cadres and militants from the length and breadth of our country. And, dim, and, and dumped in the overcrowded prison anywhere space could be found. The indictment came the next week, tense the treason. We went to court and our young lawyer, Counselor Emmanuel Barra, put up a spirited defense which annoyed the Solicitor General, the judge, a beauty, a beauty with brain, uh, Emma Shannon, wisely appeared sympathetic to the young men who were, who were prisoners. There was a father uproar and the trial was a joint. I was there, I was there. I told you already during the time when, 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 when uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Chesson came in 
the uproar, that's what he mentioned. At the entrance of the court, while we were being hushed into the police van, I noticed his young brother who, who knew Amos very well. I raised a, a clean face to him, and the people around shouted, All power to the people. I settled, I settled in a van and murder. That was for you, Amos. In my cell that night, I thought of Amos, and I knew that he would not be dis dispirited, but insensified to seek our escape from the gallows. I knew the authority would not harm him as he was feared and respected by them. It was also, it was, it was obvious that he was outside working as usual. And then a hymn that my late mother loved so well came to my mind. And I whisper about him. Because he, he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, this is the song, the hymn he was talking about. I will fear, I will fear is gone. Because I know he, I know he holds the future. And life is worth uh, the living just because he lived. We were released subsequently and Amos came to see me. He joked happily that I have put on weight and that maybe the prison rest, uh, uh, rest was necessary. I knew when the leader was teasing and laughing uncontrollably, telling him that he has sent uh, tops of food to the prison to fatten us for the slaughters. We went into the future together, lecturing and discussing in our respective classes at the University of Liberia. A year later, there was the coup the time on April 12, 1980. I was called to serve as Minister of Education and went to see Emmons. The leader cautioned me that this was the military and that I should be careful. I understood and went about my work while still lecturing at the university free of charge. An event occurred a week later when Amos was called by the new military leader and I was around. In Amos' presence, some soldier brought in two former officials of two week party who had been stripped naked and were uh, clawing their claws for, for, for falling in tumbling hands. Amos screamed, that is not the way. This is not how you treat human beings. I saw that he was disturbed greatly by the spectacle and whispered to him, we have to be careful, boo. These military men that we do not know, or these are military men that we do not know. You questioned me, you questioned me a few days ago. Amos left the Palavra hut behind the executive mansion and never went to see the marital leader again until two years later when he was called to be the chairman of the Constitutional Drafting Committee. In 1984, the marital authority arrested him for planning socialist coup. It was obvious to everyone that this was a bold-faced lie spilled by the un 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 unquestionable man to keep the leader out of the pending uh, election for the presidency. The student of the University of Liberia who saw through the, the childish lie protested, but were crushed by the military authority. I was manhandled before the university uh, together with brother Matthew Ja, later senator from River G, and Dennis Karen. We were dragged out of my car on our way to my house in Singa, hit and push around. We were released later that day. Amos in prison heard of our ordeal and sent his regret. I sent back and asked him what was to be done. He instructed me to return to Europe where I was living in exile and contact brothers for the registration of the party LPP. I followed his instruction and delivered his message. The leader was, was later released from prison and from exile in France, I sent him my, my fraternity greeting 
an expression of solidarity. LPP together with the UPP, which had evolved from power, were banned by the military from contesting uh, the pending election for what uh, the military uh, fiascos and their uh, civilian henchmen labor as having social tendency. The exact platitude swore out by the two-way party in years gone, the lesson was obvious to many of us in exile. In the face of tyrant, it is futile to raise clenched face and shut sloking and battle cry. This is a recipe for suicide. When the when, when the iron is red hot on the on the on the eve, it is time to strike. Tyrant only understand the logic of its dominance. This is the lesson of history. In November 1985, folks, like I said, if you have to go, you can go. That's okay. We can deal with it. Okay? I'm reading. In November 1985, the forces struck. They were unsuccessful, and the tyrant battled the republic, uh, bathed the republic in blood and tears. In 1990, the uprising began in earnest. I met Amos in Accra and told him that Equus was putting together a peacekeeping force. And I had suggested to some leader of Equus that he should lead an interim government as he was a unifier. The leader, this grant, uh, uh, the leader, this grant of courage and exemplary uh, uh, bravely looked me in the eyes and opinion. Bo, I was not made by God to be a political leader. He was serious about this position, and I returned. Bo, this is not the way. God made no man to be a leader. It is history that imposes obligations on us all. The leader finally accepted and became the interim president. I had to leave him in Monrovia two years into the interim presidency as my little one was dying of cancer in London. As soon as the little one gave up the ghost and went to sleep among the dead, the first call I received came from Amos. Amos. His message was touching. Bo, the little one is resting now. Take heart and embrace the sister and the other kids for me. I thank him, I thank the leader, and he handed the phone to Byron Ty, who said, I have been, I have been there, Burma, and I know how you feel. It was 24 years since I met these two fellows at the four-year Bay College, and now, in the darkness of my sorrow and my grief, they were together again, offering me condolences. One last episode that put this uh, Olympiad on the pedestal of a superhuman being that must be told for a thousand years and will eventually be stored in mortality on his iconic personality, and that has to do with the attack on Monrovia in 1992. The, the, the uh, hostile forces have surrounded Monrovia and the ECMO troops were under pressure and retreating. The ECMO commander, the gallant General um Olamna of Nigeria, with a rifle in his hand and combat gear on him, rushed to the Ducal Palace Hotel, where he must and his, uh, has his residence and uh, interim presidency. The general told him that things were difficult and that his troop could not his troop could not hold on for long. His advice to Emma was that he be escorted to an ECMO boat to sail out of Liberia safety. Our leader looked at him, the, the, pace, uh, the, pacing, in, the pacing in his eyes, the untuned differences in his voice, and said, General, I will stay here in this city with my people. If it comes for the final hour, we will fight and all will go down together. I cannot leave the mothers, babies, and stores, men, and sail away to, to safety. 
I will be here until the final battle around this, uh, this the, the lightest hotel. General Omar got up, saluted our leader, and went out to uh, mobilize his forces. This resulted in the crushing defeat of the hostile forces and the willingness of their leader to resign themselves to a compromising a compromise that will lead to election. As to Vale Vita, Amos, we will follow you, we will follow your teaching and remarkable example. The people cause your champion well. They will they will make history, Amos. The second will well after living through after living through the betrayal and sequences of exploiting group and classes. Except this, my fellow, my final bio leader, with a hymn of the battle from another people in a distinct land. Okay, the people flag, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to go through that. Well done, Emmons, for the sacrifice and solidarity in the struggle. May the revolutionary soul of this uh, fiesta and brilliant leader rest in peace. Folks, Sam Sinto, Librarian Public Radio. I am reading, I just read uh, from uh, Dr. Famile uh, Fano Bao. Uh, so you, you, you can find this and be able to read it as well. That was a very difficult thing to do. Even as a progressive, I need to drink some water. You don't tell Dr. Formula, the next time you read or write, you will write it in crown. And the English business is not good. Hey, what kind of business is there? Let him write it in crown. I will read it for him in crown. <coughs> All right, folks, Sam Sinto, Labron Public Radio. I'll go ahead and put the number up now. Uh, I'm not too sure if uh, I have not seen if what I am on Josh is on here tonight. Uh, Yeah, 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 that's true. But anyway, let me put the number up. Let me put the number up. And uh, you can call us here. You can call us. Okay. Let me put the number up. Nine one six five three three two zero four eight. Okay, that's what it is. <clears throat> so as soon as the number comes up, I will. Okay, let me let me go ahead and and, and pin this comment. Okay, so yeah, yeah, it is up there. When you call me, I'll be able to answer. And then let me just go back. Let me just go back on on a very serious note. What what what, what uh, Dr. Formula have done here? Once again, it's in this is a history record. Uh, our leader. Our leader is, 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 you can't come here, and I've argued that point uh, for over an hour now. You can't come on these kinds of uh, uh, platform or whatever, and then you claim that the progressive hurt you. You heard Dr. Dr. Sawyer telling us here, the late Dr. Sawyer telling us here, how he fought so hard for Tiller to accept some of the things that he, Tiller himself, had proposed during that negotiation process. And Tiller will renege on those proposals that he put forward himself. And the interesting statement that I told, very interesting. I like the way Tiller, uh, 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 I don't call it, put finger in Ofo Boyan's eyes. Because he told Ofo Boyan, according to what, what Dr. Sayer said, told Ofo Boyan that he was going to admit to, I mean, commit to, to, to whatever it is that the doctor uh, that Ofo Boyan was putting for, just to find out that he, he, he lies. And according to Dr. Sawyer, that Ofo Boyan said he was he was disappointed. Well, you didn't know who this man was for you to come and, and allow him to come waste lives in Liberia. You come, you allow the man to use your country because of your vengeful behavior. To destroy lives in Liberia, I like the way that you know 
They said it happened two weeks later, he died. So he died knowing that Taylor messed with him. I like that. Let him go to his grave. Yes, some of the things that, that people are awful by in there that perhaps some of us feel a little bit disappointed in there. Ofo Boyan, he's, not, he's been fighting for the Ivorian revolution for a very long time. He wanted the French out. And he was involved. But you want to tell me that you don't know the history of the Liberian in, uh, indigenous and the Liberian settler? How bad the settler were treating the, the, the indigenous people? You don't know that one? And you couldn't stop your friend from, from, from doing what they were doing in Liberia. And you were talking about friend. And because of family, relationship, whatever, you, you allow Taylor and his people to come through your country and destroy lives, property in, in Liberia. And I like the way Taylor treated him. He treated him like anything else. He's a lie. He, he lied to them. Then they, they, you don't, they, they just act like you're going to do it. He said, yeah, you depend on him. They ain't like it now. So that's the number, uh, Mr. George. Mr. Eamon George, please, if you'd like to come in here, just go on the on our platform and you come in and help me uh, to analyze everything that I've said here. But we still have about uh, 20 minutes or so to go, please. Uh, get in here if you if you have the time. If not, you want to give me a call, please. That's the number there, folks. The number is up there in this pin. Let me, yeah, it's pin. They shouldn't. So if it's pin, why is it going somewhere else? Let's pin it again. Okay. So it's there. It shouldn't go anywhere. Uh, the number is there. Give me a call. Those of you that were, that was anxious all, earlier to call, give us a call. Let me play uh, uh, Sonia Kusi a little bit. You know, yes, they, they, let me, the, the reason behind this, the, the, the message behind this song, that was 1980, by the way. And this song, the reason why I like this, during the during the war during World War II, they were asking Africans to join them to fight for their freedom, to fight Hitler, to fight for their freedom. And the African African went went there. In fact, one of my great uncle fought in that war. I know of it because he when he when I when I was little when I go to Ivory Coast, I used to see his uniform. And he used to parade that he used to put it up for people to see. So I know there are many, many Africans that fought and died for the French people to be relieved from Hitler and his, his, his nonsense. But then when the time came for us during the apartheid regime, the people were nowhere to be found. They're talking about construction engagement. That's the same nonsense they're still carrying on. That's the same nonsense they're still carrying on. So if you make a mistake as, an Af as, a, as a black man or black country, you get into any civil war, you're not going to get help. People are not coming to help you. You're on your own. You're on your own. So don't start foolishness. Talk. If any issue you have with each other, let's have a conversation. If you bring any kinds of civil war, whatever, you're on your own, you're not going to get help. Simple as that. And so for you to sit here again, to continue to say that the progressive, the educated progressive destroy your country, then you must be doing something that perhaps you probably don't understand. My number is up there. Give us a call, 916-533-2048. Let me see if I can, if I can do anything here. Uh, all right, well, the number is up there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, why does it have a Fonso number on here? Jesus Christ, Fonso. <sighs> well, don't call. You call a Fonso number, you're going to get him, and you're not going to get me. My number is 916. 533. Three. Yes, yes, Mr. George. I sent I send the link. Look on your phone. I send you the link. 
I send the link when I open it. But I, I, there was some a message there too. I'm ready for you now. Getting and, and let's have a conversation. So anyway, behind this music that I'm going to be playing, so we're saying it's our time. We need your help. Same thing in Liberia. When Liberia needed the war to join us and stop the carnage, nobody. Only African came. So that's that's what it is. And let me play this music. This music was very popular, along with the other one. Of course, it was divisive. The other music, I didn't. It wasn't my intent to be divisive when I played that uh, uh, Papa Land. I just wanted to show you a series of of issues in Liberia, where we were treated as though we were nothing. Forget second class. We were treated as though we were nothing. Nothing. There were few Congo people that recognized that we are human beings just like them. And they decided to take us, educate some of us. They couldn't educate me because my hair was not into education. You can't educate me. I don't want, I don't want to learn nothing. But there were many, many uh, indigenous Liberians that were helped by some of the Congo's brothers and sisters. I don't want to name names because I know many of them. But I don't want to name names, but they help to educate them. Let me let me, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, Mr. Josh. Mr. Josh, are you ready? Let's try it. I don't see you being ready yet. Let me know. I'll see when you're ready. So you can help me to close this stuff here. My number is up there, 916-53320. I don't know why is it not being pinned. Uh, Mr. So, if you're not running away from me, please pin my number up there. All uh, right, Mr. 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 Center Right is here now. Let me put him on. Mr. George, thank you for joining us. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Can you hear me? No, oh, you're stuck. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but your 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 video is stuck right now, so. I'm not too sure. Okay, here we go. All right. So you, you, uh, I'm not too sure how much of my, if the video is going to be like that, then can you call in? No, you're, you're call stuck. I know happening. All right. Call, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it that way. Call in. And then, uh, mm -hmm. uh, okay. All right, let Mr. George call. And then, uh, folks, my, the number is out there. Mr. So, just do 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 me a favor and put my number up and pin it for me. And those of you who've been following the, the program, if you want to give me a call, the number is up there. I can't. I I I right now. Okay, let me see, Mr. George. Mr. George, are you with me? Are you there? Hold on, hold on. It's my fault. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Mr. George. Don't go, don't go. I should have got. I've been out of this thing for quite a while now. So, folks, just take, take some time. Just bear with me. Mr. George, are you there? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, what do you make of my my uh, defense to the progressive? Where, where was it? Was it a, uh, if I was a lawyer uh, in a courtroom demonstrating my lawyer abilities that I have demonstrated here this afternoon. What do you think? You think if you was a judge, uh, the, the, the defendant uh, and uh, or the uh, prosecutor who are the, 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 the cry babies of like bureaucracy and progressive, you are throwing the case out, will you not? No. Mr. George, you want to tell me that all of my defense was there something that you, you, you're you going to obtain from the prosecutor to say that you, you, they, 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 they stand a chance on this case? Yeah. What would be your reason? Give me. Let, let me say this. Not everything that the progressive did was okay. Let's get this. There were some missteps down the road. The progressive did very well, but there were some missteps down the road. So, if one is to summarize to say, yes, the progressive did not make some mistakes, then that would not be a fair assessment. Did it do a whole lot of good? Yes. There was a mistake. One. Let me give some example. 
let me let me first just say uh, that the formula did very well. I don't know the water he had some instant or some information that you are not going to be making a live tribute to the program. I don't know. But I think maybe he has some insight that he would not be participating in that program live. I think that what prompted him the right to make this tribute. To tell people where he and Dr. Soros came from. I think if I'm making a guess, that, 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 that's the reason. Because you know, this tribute he made, if you are going out there to speak, it wouldn't have been that long. It would have been brief. But this tribute he made was an in-depth analysis of him knowing Dr. Sawyer and what they have gone through over the 51 years. Wanted to get it out there to the public, and this is why he did. You see? And let me be very frank. The progressive, the all always, but you have some high liner in it. And one of those high liner, I will tell you, was Dr. Fum, Dr. Fumler is one of the high liner in the progressive. He did follow Dr. Sawyer, he listened to him. But in any organization, you have some people who do consider high liner or radical. And Dr. Fumler is one of those. Because you, do you know the history of Dr. Fumler? He went to free time. They got, you know, the armed group thing for Liberia. So, but Dr. Sawyer would never, his role was not that far. He did strongly do you, believe do you, in, do you think because of his involvement with the Kuomba fiasco, you think, is that why you think uh, the family must have left him out of the uh, program? Or you think no, I, uh, you think is that the reason why Dr. No, Sawyer, I, Dr. Sawyer must, must have put some sort of a distance uh, between him and, and Dr. Fumler? No, I can't speak for that, but from, the, from 51 years, I think that would make Dr. Sawyer to distance himself from Fumler, knowing what they have gone through. It's just that they were all comrades, but at certain time, people take certain role, you know. And we saw here, a lot of people like the thing, that they wanted arms struggle. But he said, no, you're not going down that path. Some people went to other people and found what about Black, Black Panther. He said, you're not going down that path. So it was the same thing with Dr. Sawyer and some of it. So, but that did not destroy the relationship. I don't think it did destroy it because you can see in his remarks, when Dr. Sawyer was interim president, he stayed two years before he went to London when his son was when his child was sick. So I don't think there had not been any I, I don't know, maybe it was maybe only the raw, but people nobody spoke about any animosity between the two people. So but I think for whatever reason, the family decided to treat that the formula letter, I don't know. So I cannot speak from the inside because I don't know I have not been close to these people. But what Dr. Fumler was laying out there was to tell the public where he and his man came from and how far they came. It's not that Johnny, Johnny just can't know. 51 years, that's a heck of a long, that's half of their life. Or even more, that they, they've got to know one another for. So, living out, for me, I would personally say, I don't think it was right. But this man, and Dr. Fumula, is that Dr. Sawyer self as mentor to Dr. Fumula, mm -hmm. working in the same department as his boss. Right, right. For many years, when he went to jail, even one time Dr. Sawyer was speaking, when Fumula was in jail, that when he was talking to the authority, that he could not leave his comrade, his brother, in jail. He was still advocating for them. And you heard that the Fumula in his people mention all those things. Mm -hmm. So even if there was anything, I think that the formula should have been given the opportunity to say something to Dr. Sawyer. 
Because from what they went through and up to his death, I don't think that the kind of way that Dr. Formula described Dr. Sawyer, I don't think Dr. Sawyer would have ever left a note to say if I died tomorrow, Formula should not pay a treat to Adam Quinn. But then what, why why you think the left is, is it? Is, because I'm not too sure if the government was the one that was planning the, the funeral. The, of course, it's a state funeral, but I'm not too sure if the government had any uh, insight on that to say who say what and who they, they what. I, I'm not too sure. Uh, let me let me tell you. Once his wife was living in the children, the government planned the program along with the family. The family would tell the government this, this is how they want it. Because again, I can remember my old man died, it was the same thing. His wife was living. The, the people, foreign ministry, team, they went along with to claim the funeral of the man. So they don't, the government don't just take over and say, oh, the family got no sin. No, the family would be the one who would tell the government this is how they want the funeral service to be done. But I don't know. I'm still waiting to see what happens. Anybody from the Sawyer family will speak on this issue. Because from the surface, small I think, we just say it was not right. And like his sister said, and you think that the family is a Christ, you know, man with Christ, you know, he's you know, he highly intelligent, who not come up to vote to globalize this thing yet. But he was a sister that brought the public attention. You know, that why my brother was treated like this. When this man and this man have been in the struggle in the progressive movement from 51 years. You know, even she went out, you know, to court and he said, look at coming with it. Who accused Dr. Sawyer during the interim government that Dr. Sawyer was working for the CIA when not even speaking to him. But he was made to pay tribute to Dr. Sawyer. Yeah, right. She talked about the foreign minister. I don't know the man to be in a struggle. Maybe you know him. I, but I know. I ne I never I never heard of him. Yeah. I never heard of him. I never heard of him coming here from anywhere in the struggle. Yeah, if you talk about Alari talk about them, okay. These are people. These are people that Dr. Sorry and recruited. But what why, why 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 did you hear uh Tibotes giving a giving any uh speech at that night? I mean at the funeral as well or no? <laughs> Yeah, but I don't know. People that I see, maybe I'll, I'll go to look at it. I hear people that see and then trip you. You see? And these are the people. People there, Dr. Sawyer, Dr. Fumole, they were the ones that, 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 the Sawyer and people there were the ones that. But what, what's, uh, about the, what's about the idea of this, of, of, of the, the cry of the progressive? We have come to the to, to fruition now, uh, which is. Uh, their demand, uh, which was one man, one vote, and we have that now. What, what do you, what, what, based on that, where will you rate, how will you rate oh, no. the, the progressive? That, 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 that's why I said that the progressive did something very well in Nigeria. Mr. 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 Central Right, I wish your video was I'm okay saying, so that you and I'm I can have this conversation right now. I'm saying that the progressive did something. Very good thing. They did a good thing by giving you one man, one vote. We're not going back to the two-way party. So, so well, the, the, the other the other stuff just are struggling uh, between brothers no, and sisters. No, not, I didn't say they didn't do good. I said the progressive did something very good in Liberia. Like that was Sawyer. You know what? First he started costing his testing the system. Like you remember, the first time I heard a man called Dr. Sawyer was 1979, a uh, mayor election between Dr. Sawyer and Chuchu Horton. Yeah. Yeah. And, and of course, Sawyer, Sawyer the broom. Broom. And that went because Edward Dale, Edward Dale was then. But what uh, I don't want you to say, well, of course, you have the right to say it, but your central right, I know who you are. So, but I wish your, 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 your video will allow you for me to bring you on. And, and and let me let me let me really uh, you know we go out to I about to have a colo colo and, and and you 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 shouldn't say that they that they did everything right. I no, said so. Mister Mr. Tool, listen now. The progressive did some very good things. What are the but bad things the progressive did that you were, you were trying to hold them on? 
by joining the murder by, by, by joining the murder they have no choice they were they asked they were asked to join they could have said no they but then but listen the the military group the military group they were not educated they have no clue on what to how to run the government that is the problem so because what happened there the murder hijacked the progressive movement by taking our coup. Look, listen what that, that the former name was Dr. Soyo. He was someone that the Soyo never wanted forced by any change in life by force. If you tell from what Dr. Soyo was saying, Dr. Soyo never wanted anything like that. He never wanted anything, any change in life by force. He never wanted it. Because Dr. Sawyer knew exactly the outcome would be de would be deadly, and which of course you were proven right again, as Dr. Formula describing. This man was far sighted, highly educated. He knew. Look, 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 look at what he said about the demonstration. You see, this is the first time some people are hearing from Dr. Formula who was involved. When they ask uh, the past people, what are you going planning? What are you going to do? They say, we got our medical yeah, supplies. Yeah, yeah, alcohol, alcohol and, 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 and banish. Yes. And Dr. Sawyer said, what? This will end up to be bad because the government will see it as confrontational. Yeah, Dr. Sawyer, he said, but will support you people in solidarity. But that time, obviously you got medical supplies, bandage and thin alcohol, it was wrong. So then Dr. Sawyer, because he saw what this thing would have led to. And he said to walk away from that. So this man knew exactly because what this man has said it you know, political scientists, yeah, look all around the world in Africa, what the leader does. And that's why you are warning, ah, hey, this thing, if it go, it will turn up it there, and which of course did happen. Sawyer was always negotiating. But let, 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 let's, come, let's come back to the liberal progressive of, of uh, mm -hmm. uh, the liberal progressive himself. What do you, yeah. uh, what, what are you going to be praising the liberal progressive for reading so uh, perfectly here tonight? Even though, oh, he, no. I, even though he crammed man, but you're able to read uh, uh, Dr. Tibo, I mean, Dr. Uh, Formula yeah. writing and yeah. chop, chop some up, but it was able to read it. Uh, yeah. what, 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 what would you say? Yes, the thing is, this is very good because people will all play this video. So listen, some people may not have the time to read that the Sawyer entire speech. But the listen, yeah, what Dr. Sawyer was saying, and some of the history he was giving, what was happening at a time, the struggle in which the people were faced with the challenges, the role that these people play at the time. That was very good on your part to read it. I don't know what, what you say, you chopping what the now, what exactly. The best language I can speak and the best language I can speak is crime and the best language I can speak is telling. That's the best language we can speak. I, I, I like, I, uh, Alfonso here, uh, they sent the way far right here, writing all kind of thing here tonight. But I, I like, I like your analysis. I like when you start when you start saying the liberal progressive is doing something good. Uh, that's the kind of thing that I like to hear from uh, LPR. He's supposed to be the, the CEO instead of you know encourage the, 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 the to encourage me to do more. Now he's there telling me I'm looking for somebody to praise me. And he's supposed to be the one who he's our boss. He's supposed to be praising me, and then he's there to say something else. So oh, yeah, yeah, yes, the thing, oh, Mister Soha, he has always told you. That don't follow the comments on the screen. Don't respond to some of these people. Do 
what you're doing. Because some people are trying to distract you. But what you did was very necessary. So read this entire tribute from back the formula. Because many people did not even read this thing. Many people are not listening to it. Many people did not read it. But they all that the formula made a tribute. But the bottom line here, I think he fell hurt. Yeah. It, it was the time that so I've been given going to pay his final respect. Right. And especially yeah. especially when he started talking about their their first encounter back in 1971. I thought and that I, was I thought that was very interesting. And then and then he 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 went full circle and connected that to the death of his son. That the yeah. two gentlemen that he met some 40 some more years later, and yeah. then now they're there uh, expressing their sympathy uh when he in need of 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 uh, pity from other brothers and sisters, and they were there. Not pity, but uh, uh, sympathy. They were there to express it, and I thought that was very, that was very moving. Well, listen to him. Up to the point of that. Book, Let, that well, can you can you hold on one minute? Let me take this call, please. For sure. Samson to LeBron Pablo, what's your name? Where you're calling from? What's on your mind? Expressing their well, I'm on. I'm I'm calling from. Can, death, yeah. yeah, but can you lower your monitor because it's it's really uh, doing some numbers for us here. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So go ahead. I have Mr. George on hold, but go ahead. What's on your mind? Well, I see the program is talking about what our view on the progressives in Liberia. Yeah. What well, my view is that um, there's a lot of misinformation. The progressives. They have been initially with patriotism and really wanted to help Liberia. And uh, unfortunately, the coup of 1980 actually disturbed the progressive agenda, and some of them were sidetracked by uh, sectionalizing and uh, Travelism, which actually led the country to some level of disintegration. Yeah. yeah. So, my view is that progressive in every nation of the world, they supposed to set the agenda for our social disco, where the nation is growing. Progressives are people who have had some experiences from different parts of the world, education, and they really want to chart a new path for every nation, and Liberian progress is no different. Right. But what I, what I want also to take into consideration, not that, not that the statement you're making is, is, is not in place, it's quite in place, and I think you're right on point, but what I also want also to take into consideration is that most those days, most of the people, they were very young. And the African pan Africanism in, in Africa was, was running rampant. And everybody, every one of those guys, people that they were reading their pamphlet, the books, and things that they were reading were all people who were fighting uh to, to, to gain independence. So the 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 language and the and the train of thought at that time, I believe, were geared toward revolution. Uh, and so when 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 the progressive came to Liberia, uh, they found within the two way party uh, 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 rooted uh, uh, bad behavior. Let me put it that way. I don't want to use other words here. Bad behavior from the two way party towards their own brothers and sisters. And I think the progressive then decided. To to not not strictly not necessary to engage the government, I believe, but to enlighten the people and then let the people them themselves decide as to whether they want to engage the government or not. I believe that was what was happening because um, if you listen to Dr. Sawyer, uh, uh, and even the the clip that I play and 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 the subsequent interview. Uh, you will you you can hear from his voice that he's not a violent person. He's not a violent person. He's not like people like Bacchus Mafia. Bacchus Mafia, the part they're not a violent people either. But 
if the violent situation present themselves, they will do what they can to make sure that they achieve whatever goal they set up to achieve. You know, and, but with Sawyer, it seemed to me that he he he, he his tendency is to uh, negotiate uh, uh, to have a peaceful outcome, even though he's not going to uh, uh, erode. That's not according to uh, 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 I call it formula. His way of negotiating does not mean he's going to give in or allow you to erode his 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 his, his uh, stand on issues. But he would prefer to have things in uh, uh, a peaceful result. Uh, whereas uh, people like Dr. Famle, uh, they would say, "I want the tyrant's corpse at the feet of uh, at, the, at the toes of my feet." Uh, and, and why did I hold the piece of of of, of gallons or whatever in my one hand? I want the tyrant to be down there. So there's there are two different things. So I just want to point that out. But I agree with you. I agree with you. I think. Uh, uh, but we have to understand that these were all young people themselves at the time. Yeah, they were all young people, and listen. Uh, let me let me put today, Mr. let me put Mr. Josh on. Uh, and, okay. And, and, yeah, uh, Mr. Miss. Okay, he's coming. Yeah, but go ahead, and make your point. Why I'm I, why I'm connecting Mr. Josh as well. Go ahead. Oh, Mr. Josh, are you there? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have three winners. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, as I'm saying, um, if you look today, I believe that uh, there are some school of thought. There are people who think that a progressive did not do well for Liberia. I want to challenge them. Uh, every nation in the world, the progressives are the ones that set the agenda. You cannot run a nation and uh, don't have people who can see things in a very passionate way to see how we can charter the progressive agenda for Liberia. In 1980, I was pretty young and had some involvement with the Red Riot, and those were noble objectives. I was there at the uh, party, quarter way. It was nothing about violence. It was nothing about it was just like this thing. When the information about what Tobo was doing, Tobo had put to his brother and family members, they would have more than 50% of the profit generated from right. And when you look at the 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 the, 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 uh, the income of our people and asking them to pay uh, $23, cover with the fact that we have information that all the rest of our center, like there were donations made to the government for the people. The, the, the progressive was patriotic people. They did not, uh, did not come to create problems to cause the country to go backward. And even if the progressive, they did not actually, in any terms of our national life ever, were in, let's say, presidential authority. But those who are not progressive, what have they done? What do we have to say? We still have fragmented society. So we have to sit down and listen. The issue of how we take that country forward is for me, we have to involve the progressives, involve everybody at different level of their political contribution so we can take the country forward. Thank you. The time for us to come together. That's why my, that's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. But let me let me just say something. Yeah, Mr. 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 Judge, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, and wrap it up for yes, us so I can close it then. Uh, as you say, the progressive made some mistakes. The rest riot, the rest you mentioned, is red was not sent free to Liberia. You can do your research on this. The rest was sent to like government is to set up that the rest. There was there was sort of red the government, the United States government was sent. And say, sell the right, make the profit for development. Those rights were sent, I think that they will give it and say, sell this right, the profit goes for development. The Japanese government did the same thing sometime at any time. You see the road that they call that Japanese Triple Highway? The Japanese sent some all products to Liberia for the government to sell those products and use the profit to build that road. 
today the case there are some case in court. People at the nation of commerce, they bang the store millions of dollars on that project. So it was, it was the thing the United States government sometimes was going to send the school to like the, the right. I think they got peace on the full right, government sell, and take the private for development. And government will keep that uh, price at that time, government used to stop it down the right. That is why sometimes I will tell people, which I have a oh, <clears throat> great deal of respect for the late back on back. But some of the things were not told to the Liberian people. For the rest, to stay at that price, government will have to. Mr. Judge, let me take this other call here, please, if you don't mind. Okay. Hello, Samson Toll, I brought up What's your name? Where you're calling from? What's on your mind? Yeah, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, uh, my name is. I'm coming from State of New York. Okay, sir. Thank you for joining us. What's on your mind, sir? Yeah, uh, I just uh, come to the station, the show, and uh, the topic on our discussion or overall someone's you know, talking about democracy, how, you know, they, they were able to bring multi party to Liberia, and you know, the person was saying a lot of good things. But uh, after all, in my view, our problem today in Liberia is being caused by the so called progressive. The reason I'm saying this is that, uh, are you hearing me? Yeah, 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 right. yeah. The reason I'm saying this is that uh, our country, people can say, oh, you know, the other people who were suppressing our people. Yes, I agree. I agree that it was suppressing our people. But we have peace. We have peace. Since the progressive came to be, all of them have individual interests. But what I mean, what I mean, what I mean, what I mean, let me push you a little bit on this here. You, yeah. you're, you're saying that. Uh, before the progressive came, even though there were Congo people that were that were suppressing our people, but you have peace, and because you have peace, you, you want to have peace. You, you have peace, and have peace. but but therefore you yes. will accept the process of suppression. Is that what you're saying? Well, our people were suppressed, but we have peace. I understand we have that. Peace. I understand that. But the can you? The progressive team. The progressive team. No, no. Well, hold, on that, hold on now. Hold on now. Hold on now. Before we ahead, move, ahead, before ahead. we move out to the progressive and whatever they brought in, you said before mm -hmm. they came, our people had peace, even though they were being suppressed. But the question to yeah. you now is: is this? So you prefer you prefer the the suppression, even though you have peace, you you satisfied with the peace, and 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 the fact that your people are being suppressed, that's okay. Yeah, I mean, we are peace. We are peace. I understand uh, that. We are peace. The coming, yeah. the coming, the coming of progressive led to two, almost two hundred and fifty thousand Liberian got killed in the civil war. I the understand. I, 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 I you, yeah. you're, you're going too, you're going far than uh, what I'm trying to get from you. All I'm trying yeah, to get okay. from you is this: you said, and this is what you you say. You're saying that. Before the pro let's just stay with before the pro progressive king. Before the progressive mm -hmm. king, you agree that our people have peace. Agree? Have peace. But in the uh, process, yeah, they were we being suppressed. Peace. They were being suppressed. You agree with that? We, 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 we were we were I agree to you. I agree to what okay. you're So the question then, the, que the question then, what is the alternative? Do you want, do you like peace? So much that you don't mind your people being suppressed. Well, if I have peace, if I have peace, the suppression you're talking about is relative. It's how, relative. How is it relative? Okay. Relative to what? The suppression, the, the suppression, the suppression you're talking about. Those days, even though our people were suppressed, they were not, they were not, they were not, you know, allowed, you know, to. 
to have their share in government. But I mean, things were, things, things were fine. Things were fine. Okay. If, if, if you have... But, but let me let me push you let me push you a little bit let me let let me push hello can you hear me I'm hearing you right okay. let me push you a little bit there if you say what is your definition of suppression in the first place maybe if we know your definition then perhaps we don't even have to go any farther than that what is your definition of, uh, of suppression with respect to Liberians and what was happening what what's your definition suppression suppression is depriving you of certain basic rights. Okay. Depriving you of certain basic rights. Okay. But you were comfortable, you were okay, you're okay with, you were okay with the suppression, the, from your understanding now, I'm not talking about my own definition, your definition. You're, you're okay to be suppressed by depriving you of some basic rights. You're okay with it as long as you have peace. You, you're not answering the question. It's just a Progress yes or no. Yeah, I said yes. I have peace. Okay. The progressive, right. the, the kind of okay. the progressive, the okay. kind of progressive left to to to, to see what war. Okay. The kind of progressive, the brown multi party system. Our government is very small. We we'll go into election. We have more than twenty party people for the president. All right. Okay. All right. Tell me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your view. I mean, we respect that. And I and I truly, truly appreciate you uh, calling and making your point uh, clear to all of us, uh, even though I don't agree with it. But that doesn't mean that's not your view. That's your view. We respect it. And I really, really do appreciate you coming and making your contribution on the platform. Uh, me not agreeing with your, with your point of view does not mean anything. It just means I don't agree with it. But it's your point. And it's valid to you and whoever is supporting that. And you're not the only one that have that kinds of view anyway. So I really appreciate you coming on to make your point. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. George, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Quite interesting. So, Mr. Cole, let me say, Mr. So, so, so the fact that I try to beat you around, I, I don't think they, they are why you're not even messing the mark. You're not <laughs> beating around the bush. He's telling me people got trouble. Uh, you know, the people before the king, even though the people are suppressing us, but we have peace. I think we would have just stayed like that. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, 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 uh. Can you take it, Mr. Joe? Let me, let me take this other call here. Let me take this other call, please. Hello, Samson Toll. I'm from Public What's your name? Where you're calling from? What's on your mind? Toll. Yeah, thank you. This is Johnson calling from Maryland. Thank you for joining us. Your, yeah, I listen to your program. Very interesting. Thank you. But I have a different intake of course. on the whole thing about the progressive. Please, bring it on. Yeah, yeah. So um, as you were reading Dr. Samuel's, you know, tribute, and then talking about Dr. Sawyer, let me just give you a Let's synopsis about myself, okay? Please. I went to school in Sierra Leone. In the 1971 that you're talking about, when Dr. Famula was at Friday College, I was in ninth grade in Sierra Leone. I attended, you know, St. Edward Secondary School. And Famula, he graduated from Albert Academy. And the sister, Meata Famula, she graduated from FSSG, which is three time secondary school for all girls. Their father was the ambassador in Sierra Leone. But at the early age, before I got to know myself, the, the father was recalled from Sierra Leone as ambassador to go to Kenya. Right. So when you're talking about this progressive thing here, yeah, like and Dr. Famule, all of the radical of, you know, being anti-government, where you learn it from, from both Sierra Leone and then, and in Kenya, because during that period yeah, of I time... Don't, I don't mean to interrupt, <laughs> but, but the fact <laughs> like, that I... No, the, let me, the, no, hold on one minute. The fact that I have done the trial of formula, you sound like, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, you sound like one of the agents that Tottenham sent to do an investigation. Uh, or Kemba, why, why, you, why, you, you why? sound like Kemba. That 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 really? formula, 
that it, it, it just exactly what you say. He said he said in one of the dissertation, I mean, the, uh, in one of his uh, statement during the time of the trial on Stan, he said the mm -hmm. idea is foreign to Liberian, but the fact that formula mm -hmm. came from Sierra Leone and to Kenya, mm -hmm. he, he got those ideas from Sierra Leone and then they amplified, they amplified them when he was in, in Kenya. You, that's exactly what, what you're saying here. Go ahead. It's, okay, it's very because, interesting. Yeah, yeah, because you know why it's interesting? Because I'm a historian and uh, student. And the school system is in, in, in Sierra Leone, you know, where they teach history, they teach not like when you talk about world nation in Liberia, they teach the world nation, they teach the history of Africa. So I can go into detail, okay? When you talk about the Mao Mao society, okay? And then in Sierra Leone, you know, they have two opposition, you know, party there, the SLPP and then the APC. During the time when I was there, when Dr. Famule, you know, was student, you had Abad Magai, who became the first prime minister. He was then the prime minister of Sierra Leone. And the father was a close friend of the ambassador and I was a close friend of, you know, um, uh, Abad Magai, Abin, and, and, and Milti Magai. And then Sheikha Stephen, who later on become, you know, the president also of Sierra Leone. He was an opposition from the APC or People's Congress Party. But he was leaning towards the, you know, the communists. So in where he lived in Brookfield, by the Kokiyama Road, across his house, that where you have the Russian embassy, you know. And then what, what I'm trying to say here is that, let me call, let, you know, because that's a very interesting story. Because when I left, when I, after I graduated from high school in Sierra Leone, after I took my GC in 1974, I came back to Liberia in 1977. So it was two years before the rest riot. And I was then 18 years old. And guess what? I was working at Wellheston High School. My application was to teach. But then the late Paul K. Williams, he said, my son, you're too small to teach in this school. And I told so many women can attend school in, in here. Yeah. So, but what I would do is that I, you will work in my office. So I became a, a, a administrative assistant to the principal. People like Sapa Myers, you know, Venetia Charlie, all the guys who play for IE, they all know me, you know. So, and then during that progressive time, this was the time that they were doing recruitment of all the high school, you know, students. Most of the are from 10, 11 grade up, you know. And then the, 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 the indoctrination, this is, what, this is where I'm coming from to blame the progressive about the whole thing. Because, you know, <clears throat> politics, politics is something that, you know, you, people have to be very careful. Um, so many times, you know, you have people like Dr. Toba, my people there, who went around the schools and then talking about economy, how the wealth in Liberia, that children yet unborn, you can give them $250, the money stays surplus. But literally, what you were talking about, it was, it was not talking in a sense of, you know, and say physical cash, but rather if the natural resources are put into place and, you know, and then well managed, then every Liberian will be benefited. But was he saying okay, something so wrong? Was he saying something wrong? Yes, he was saying something wrong in the sense that you're like a preacher. If you stay on the pulpit to preach and talk about say, you know, if you're not baptized, you will not go to heaven, but you don't tell them the steps how to get to baptism, then it's wrong. That's what he was doing. You should have <laughs> make a plain say, look, we have wealth. The wealth that in this country, that if the government manage the wealth and then distribute the equal. Well, let me, let me, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Uh, and I think this, mm -hmm. this one gonna this one not gonna gonna really drive you up off the wall. Uh do you have a long do you have a long do you have a long form birth certificate? Uh, to say that you're like you. <laughs> do you have the long okay, form birth okay. certificate? Do you have the long form okay, birth certificate? Listen. Okay. So, well, you know what? Let me tell you something. I'm a Sarah, I'm a Ladi, I'm a I'm a crew man. You want me to speak crew to you? Wait, wait, wait. Sure you, want me you want me to speak crew to you? Because I experienced that before. <laughs> but you know, you know what? You know what I'm asking. Because all these know, years, know uh, all these it. years, yeah. and you have not, you have not gotten rid of the the Sierra Leone accent. So the, yes, uh, you know, you know uh, I you went to Sierra Leone. <laughs> Listen, I went to Sierra Leone at the age of six. I was six years old. Okay, oh, wow. I left from there when I was 
18 years old, okay? So, so yeah, you can just yeah, imagine yeah, that, okay? I know, I know. But, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I think, I, I, no, I to know, be honest, let me, let me say something, that. let me say something yeah. serious because we got a lot of people that are watching right now. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think your knowledge, your knowledge and your, uh, uh, information on the history i think is 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 very intel um, intelligent of course but it's very amazing and, and and telling uh to say to speak you know that you're giving us all of these information their connection and things like that i thought it was very mm -hmm. interesting so i want to thank you but go ahead and finish your statement okay then, okay yeah then let me close on this thing okay dr amos so yeah you know when i came to when i came back home you know i worked at the special security service during those time Right. So all of these key players, I know all of them, you try to excuse them to say, oh, they were working, you know, in military government, all those kind of things that the mistake they made. No, they didn't make that mistake. They knew about the coup. They knew what was going on. Three days before the coup, you remember that uh, and the late back of mass, you sent a letter to Todma to resign mm -hmm. overnight. And that was then they were arrested. And then later on, before the coup took place, when they were free, and guess what? Who was surrounded? Uh, and do you have you have back of Matthew who was then foreign minister? Okay. Then you have a uh, doctor doctor Fanule, minister of uh, of uh, education. Then you have Chair Chipo, minister of justice. And you know that Chair Chipo was Joseph Chessing. He was read by uh, and, and the the former the late uh, former minister of justice Chessing Joseph Chessing. And then later on, he changed his name to Chechipo. Some of these things, they don't, they don't know that, you know. So what I'm saying is that because of, of the preaching that they pre, what happened? Three a week, the major speak that they gave. Now when he uh, we do what? He increased the salary of all government workers from $65, $70 to $200, $250. Effective immediately. Do you remember that? And do you remember during the time of that coup? that every council member, their security were getting per day, per day, $15, according to rank, $20, $25. And then guess what? Chipote was what? He was the Minister of Planning and Economic Affairs. A son, that I call him a son, that I hate to see on, on, on radio and talk about economy, I'm talking about Samuel Jackson, he was Deputy Minister of what? Of of mm -hmm. of uh, uh, mm -hmm. commerce, okay. And these were the people when back on Matthew the rights issue. It was a lie. It was a proposal from uh, Florence Chenoweth. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but yes, but yes, 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 yes and the, I won't let you run away with that. No, they, this this I'm gonna have to push back. I'm gonna have to push back. The the rights issue. Yes, it was uh -huh. a proposal for Chenoweth. But here is what here is what was happening. You got uh -huh. Tobo, you got Tobo and his family was in the rice business. You have most of the members, top members of the two week party, they were in the rice business. So by increasing by increasing the rice price, the, it was not the importer alone that was gonna that was gonna benefit. The issue was the government is increasing the rice price because the member of the government who also happen to be sellers of rice. We'll also also I will be like Mr. Like Let me hold you to that point. Let me hold you. Let me hold you. You, you progress. Let me hold you. Okay. Now, the thing that you never add to your statement is that a proposal was not finalized. No, but we, 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 we the progressive, one. we didn't even want it to be finalized. No, no, that's number one. Number two, the wrong way to say that they want to bring the increment of the rice and then guess what? Back on my said that he will import rice. He will import rice for what? For I think nine or sixteen dollars a bag. But he told the government that the government refused. Yeah, but, 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 but they, they, they were never given the opportunity to 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 actualize to actualize their okay, yeah, guess what? Guess what? When he became okay, then guess what? When he became after the coup, when he became. But that was a military minister, government. That was a military question. government. That was a military government. Why you government. Use that? No, no, you Mr. can't. Mr. You Mr. cannot. Mr. Because he, you, you, can't, you, can't, you can't tie right. that. You cannot tie that around him. First of all, the ah, military well, government, ah, listen now, when the military <laughs> government, when the military government came in, they suspended yeah. the constitution. Let's, let's recognize that. that. And as a result of that, as a result of that, the military government the proposal, whatever it is you're going to give them, if they like it, they do it. If they don't like it, how sure are we that during that in a, a confidence process that they, that the minister did not propose that? 
It's a tool. Yes. It's a tool. Yes. Let us be very, let us be very honest in our conversation. Okay, go ahead. Let me say, when the rest issue, you see, in politics, you have to study what is the uh, political commodity. Yes, sir. Rest of the, polit- the rest is the state of political commodity in Liberia. So when Toma made that step, when he made that proposal, at the time, we're following to who was Minister of Agriculture. Mm-hmm. When, they, when they made that proposal, the opposition who should left by back took advantage of it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Hold on. Hold on. And run away. Hold on. <laughs> they took that politics. They took advantage. They, they said, hey, the government thinks they're going to increase rest by this time, which would be very unbearable for any citizen. The government is getting the rights. And they want to say at this point, and because Toro at this time, Toro in massive restaurant business. So, Michael Marcus then said, if there is some power, they will, they will say rest will be so at Nada and something, it's not 22 that and something, which was very dis- dishonest. Mm-hmm. And Michael Marcus became foreign minister. Recently, the people, he was asked the question, he said that they were not in power. So Thank not- you. <laughs> They could not do that. But <laughs> because they, they were under the military government. It's a tool. Hold on. The truth of the matter is, Bible and Marxism admitted it on. Because the right that was being brought into Liberia were being sucked up by government. Yes. Like it, to keep it at a price. It was such a die. So what, do, what, Mar- what, what exactly? Why would you want to blame Bible and Matthew of not bringing <laughs> rights in the country then? Hold on now. Let me come to the blaming. Because he knew very well, they knew very well that rice would be sold at nine dollars or seventy nine fifty cents. Mm-hmm. But they did not tell the people that hey, the rest being sold at this point, the government will have the government is supposed to ask So therefore, it cannot be sold if they bring it in. Strictly if they take the subject, the price will have to go up. They were not true. And that's part of it, they took advantage of it. And so, and so, so then why were you even if it, if you agree? That it is politics and they took advantage of it. Why will you not try to hold them of taking advantage of no, something that is out in the public? Our people were not our people were not that educated to know, exactly. to know what the government was doing and what the government was not doing. It was but the I government was, it was the if the government if the government were not corrupt, if the government were truthful for, for with the people, they won't believe things that Bacchus Mafia was saying. Oh, okay. But because of their corrupt behavior and the fact that they were not trustworthy, the government, two we party was not trustworthy. Two we party has been abusing our people for so many years. And Bacchus Mafia Mr. just simply, uh, told these people oh. that this is what can happen. Mr. So, Mr. Cho, here's another fact. Here's another fact you need to know. These guys, they were member of EULA in the United States. The he, back of Matthew. I know that. The the Oscar queer. I know that. The Bar Bala. I know okay. that. I know that. And you know it was the same trouble who invited them to Liberia and they went on country tour. You know that? Yes. You know that it was the same very trouble. Yes. Who gave uh, um, back of Matthew uh, 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 say uh, um, uh, um, 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 money for them to register as a political party? I, I agree. I know all of that. Okay, and I, I live in Yucatan. But but and but they, here's they, the thing, they, though. They, here's they, the thing. Because of those, hold on, hold on. No, no. Before you finish, before you finish, because of those behavior that Tava exhibited, some member of the Tui Party, including his own brother, was mm-hmm. so angry with him that they exactly, said that he was selling out. So there was no uh-huh. way Tava okay. was going to win this battle. So uh, yeah, yeah, we okay. all know those things. Okay, now. Let me let me finish on that point now. Then you know that Omer Tekwa, who was a probate judge, he was in New Kuta, and he have knocked off from the Temple of Justice, he have gone home. And they have up to six o'clock before that party should be registered. They had to send car for the mayor to go to New Kuta to gain and rush into the to Temple of Justice in order to sign a document before the party became, uh, um, before that organization became a party. And you know that uh, Nelson, uh, uh, I'm talking about Blamo uh, uh, Nelson. Yes. You know that at the time his brother, the late uh, uh, Tibor Nelson, was the was the was the NSA director, 
So let me tell you something, Mr. Tu. This thing is deep, we, you know. We know all of these things. Happen. We know but, all of these yeah, things. You know, yeah, what what I don't want you guys to do. Don't know. The public don't know. The public don't know. The, the, the progressives cannot rewrite history to suit their narrative. No, they no, are, we're not writing play, history. We're telling you, we're telling you. Nigeria. Yeah. I'm serious. The, the, no, no, that's, that is the one that I'm not going to accept. We're telling you that the progressive came in and opened your eyes. So no, that you they never be... opened our eyes. Our eyes were open. How your eyes were open when Tama then taking gold from you just so no. that you can go to school? How your eyes are open? No, listen. Listen, Mr. Tu, uh, the coroner, let me be clear here. I always say this. If anybody come out to say the progressive did everything 100%, right? Then you're not being honest. That's but, true. Hold on. But the progressive did a whole lot for the country that today we have. Let me say this. The progress caller came and said something that our people were, our people are suffering and we have peace. I just found out to be I mean I can't believe it someone would say the pressure thing like that. Except when you're saying it maybe you were part of the ruling class. But I remember as a child in the village and Mr. Tor can attest to it. They used to set people down and put their face to the sun for hot time. Yeah. They yeah. used to put rap. Yeah. Right it it right happened in total time, right before my own eyes. I know that. They made men to knee down on that rock. They used to take stick and put it behind your, your, your knee. Yeah. Your, 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 to, to, to pay that money. We're telling someone also those things. And, and what happened to, to the money? Back, you didn't have no high well, school in your in your town. Where the money is coming from? Well, I, just well, okay. men who, I would say that they, the suffering was better. Then, we know, going back a little bit, we know what the frontier, the frontier force did to Liberia, to our people yes. in Liberia. So, so, if somebody come and say the story was better, I, 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 can't, Mr. I can't argue that point because. Right. That, Mr. George. What, what, Mr. What, Mr. That, what if, you know, that, that, that is true, Mr. George. That is true. Because but, but guys, uncle, guys, we, we got to go. We got to go. We got to go. go. We got to go. take a soldier and throw the soldier in the armor to cross the river. And when the story are reaching the town, they got to kill cow and cook for the men. Then these people are collecting our tax. But you know where some of these uh, government officials were collecting our tax? One was like Dr. Sawyer's uh, father. Oh, he was working at Final. Oh, my goodness. My, well, you know that? Okay, he was that. tax collector. Well, Another well, one was Tibotan's father. Okay. He was working at right. Final. Okay. And all these right. are all native too. So okay. you know what? You can't just put it on the Congo people, my brother. And let me close on the thing on Dr. Sawyer and Dr. Sawyer because I work with the interim government. Dr. Uh, and Mr. Tu, I'm sorry you and I in Liberia during the war. But I can tell you from the inception of the war, on December 24th, that, that Christmas Eve, 1989 to 1995, that when I left Liberia to come to the state, so I stay all along. I one of those that survived, that went to Fripo with do and survived. And then when Soya came in, the SSA were called by and then we went and I went back to work. So I know exactly some of the things that you're saying, I can send you people I knew some of the meeting, I were there. That one of the things that, you know, that where my frustration is that, as the previous caller called that, most of these progressive, they were in there for their own personal gain. And that is true. They were playing double game during the Soya government. Let me tell you now. Because you know why? But Soya himself, Soya himself told us that. That they were sending people, <laughs> that they were sending people that were in it for themselves. He told us that. He yeah, but guess it. what? How many, how many people, how many, the video that you played today, how many Liberians have watched that? How many Liberians know that? Except and that's what we're trying to do to educate them, them about you the see? progressive behavior. So yeah, but you, when you want to do the education, you have to say it all. You can't just say half truth and you leave the other side. Talk the other side that the progressive they wrong. Okay. Yesterday, uh, 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 Sam uh, Sam Jackson in Monrovia and uh, talking about he graduated from some of the best schools in, 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 in the world, but the men don't have a job. He's still running to run for job. And here was the man who is a founding member of Yola in 1974. I know the whole history. 75. Okay, I mean, it's, okay 75. You know, thank you for point of correction. Okay, 75. Sam Jackson, 
Sam Jackson was in a Palava house when Doha had a major speech. He's the one I had on the dark goggles, like a CIA. Okay, all right. Okay. okay. All right, we got to go so, anyway. Thank you ever so much, Mr. Toho. I really enjoyed it. Enjoyed no, it but, I, but I, 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 hope, I hope you and I can have the conversation and have and have some uh, serious discussion about the progressive. Mr. Oh, Jackson? Definitely. I will, give, I will give you more information. You know, thank, thank you got you. my number. Save my number. Thank you. Thank and you. I have you. I will save it. Thank okay. you for the time. Uh, we appreciate Bye. it. Mr. Josh, let me take this. Hello, caller. Are you there? Okay. Mr. Josh? Uh, Mr. Josh, you have to close it. I got to call him, but he's going to have to close it. He's going to have to close it. Folks, we've been here for quite a long time now, so just bear with us. We'll soon be closing. Hello? Yeah, Mr. Josh, close it for us. We've, we've been here, and I'm, I can't. This is going to three hours. I know it's Friday, but all of you have to go. So close it for us, please. Well, we're part of the discussion. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, to wrap this thing up, I can get fed up. I think that the woman was disappointed. Based upon that thing that had you go, that took you just to tell the public that how far he and Dr. Fumble, I mean, Dr. Sawyer came along. Right. And I think that was his way of telling people how long he knew this man for. Right. It, for me, if there was anything that people said that he did to Sawyer, I think they should have put that behind him and gave him that time to pay his respect to someone that he really respected. Right. You know? Okay. And some people got to be the mature people in the room. Okay. So, yeah, uh, that's it. All right. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I'm sorry that we were rushing, but we've been here for quite a long, and I think we have to go. Yeah. But thank you, thank you, Mr. Mr. Josh. And uh, let's meet, let's meet on the 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 platform. Uh, I hope, if not tomorrow, Sunday, definitely we will meet. And then, uh, but this this kumba here here, just remember, it's not gonna last. It's not gonna last. So I just want you to know that what? tonight, you and I having some serious. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Ellen, then, Ellen, then working to our government. The whole thing, the whole mess in our country, it, it, it's just a big mess. We're all brothers and sisters. If we can just look into each other's eyes and be truthful, we'll be fine. But let me go. Let me go. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Josh. We appreciate it. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Again, folks, Samson told LeBron Pablo, I want to thank all of you again tonight for tuning in. But before we leave, Let's ask the European to come and join us to fight. That was Hitler. He was in Europe. I said that was Hitler. Hitler was in Europe. And this Hitler was practicing a fatigue. Yes, Hitler was practicing a fortnight. And those European soldiers wanted it to die. And those European soldiers wanted it to quench. One more time. That was Hitler. He was in Europe. That was Hitler. I say he was in Europe. And that Hitler was practicing apartheid. Yes, Hitler was practicing apartheid. And those European soldiers wanted him to die. Oh, yes, European soldiers wanted him to die. That was war. I said that was war. Yes, that was war between Hitler and Europe. And that was war to eradicate apartheid in Europe. And that was war to eradicate that battle in Europe. And all the whole world was invited to fight. The whole world was invited to fight. Yes, the whole world was invited to fight because America was invited to fight. Japan was invited to fight. Russia was invited to fight. France was invited to fight. Not all that. Africa was invited to fight. Yes, Africa was invited to fight. My father and your father were invited to fight. My father and your father were invited to fight. Like obedient children, 
We went there to fight. Like obedient children, we went there to die. I said, like obedient children, we went there to fight. Oh, yes. Like obedient children, we went there to quench. Now help them finish. Now they don't want to help us. There are so many Hitlers in Africa today. I said, there are so many Hitlers in Africa today. There are so many mercenaries in Africa today. I said there are so many mercenaries ruling Africa today. Some in Botswana, some in Namibia, some in Santome, some in Soweto, some in Simas in all of us. Tormenting my people, killing my people, enslaving my people, with Simas in all of us. We be calling all the world to help us to fight. I said we be calling all the world to help us to kill our people. We be calling all the world to help us to drive them. I'm talking about peace, resolution. They are talking about it at the United Nations. I said they are talking about peace with humiliation. They are talking about peace with provocation. I said they are talking about peace. I don't have this Okay, good. Folks, thank you very much uh, for tuning in tonight. We want to thank all of you. Please tune in again. Uh, we'll do our best to continue to bring you information that are important, we think, and hopefully you will join us. Thank you. It's been a very, very wonderful, wonderful Friday. Please take care of yourself on this Friday evening. Let's have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. God bless you. God bless all of us. Good night, folks. Bye-bye.